Hi, everybody. Welcome to, uh, I guess, what will be kind of a normal thing for After Dark's going on. Uh, we're going to talk about spooky shit because we love it. Mm-hmm. Um, and before we uh, before we get right into the meat of things, because I just had everyone listen to a little audio clip for my entry for this, uh, I'm Connor McGraw, and who else is here? Uh, Arlen Haro with this new show, maybe? I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I am the Fahey Oracle, Country Davenport. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Eric Fedorchek, and I have been living on a farm raising 47 <laughs> dogs <laughs> in Mexico. Uh, and I'm Lou Gonzalez, and, you know, I'm taking my characters back So you, because you're a monopoly. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to be taking Smallville Chronicles with you? Yes. Please. <laughs> you, can, you can keep them. <laughs> fucking I, I fucking dare you. <sighs> We'll pay you. You we'll can't quit you. that show. Yeah, I'll pay you to take it away and never speak about it again. Yeah, that show can't quit us. It spits in its palm. It's, um, it's, it's real funny. <laughs> I actually listened to the episode where that was pitched between you and Oh, I was. <laughs> yeah. That was like my third episode, I think. Like uh, I actually, I think Maybe. it was your second. <laughs> it's Yeah. Regardless, yeah, I just I listened to it recently. I'm like, oh god, yeah, that was the uh, that was the first uh, triple X. Yeah, isn't, it, isn't it fun to go back and find that germ of an idea and just you know, yeah, and we just see, we just finished season four. Oh, oh my god! god. Uh, <laughs> Originally, you had pitched it as like a five minute thing. Yeah, <laughs> right. It was like a ten minute thing per episode, and then Alan snuck up on you and shackled your ankle to a show that uh, I wish would just go away. But it's immortal. But anyway, we're not talking about superhero stuff tonight. We're talking about creepy shit. And uh, the uh, the approach we're doing to this is we all went and grabbed uh, an idea, a concept, a story, an event, blah, blah, blah. Uh, we're kind of holding it to our chest until we kind of get a turn to reveal it and talk about it. Uh, mine has already got a little head start because I sent everybody uh, a voicemail released uh, from a... At the time of the voicemail, a missing man named Henry McCabe. Uh, what do you all think of the audio? Sounds uh, uh, so. It sounds like he's getting abducted by a predator. Like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it sounds the sounds- theme is playing and everything. It's. Yeah, it's, it's like- I was in the Marines. <laughs> they were working on a I got a giant hole in my chest. That man was attacked by one of the test subjects from Aquatic Werewolf Camp Five. I've seen it. I've been there. They took down the second tower. Okay. <laughs> Sasquatch has attacked the foundation. Uh, I don't know. Maybe it's because I was who, hanging out who I saw today, but it sounds like a bunch of, like, a meth head trying to kill someone. <laughs> it does It does sound like he's t- tied up. Like, it, yeah. like... It sounds like blood. Bound. It sounds What's like funny gurgling. is what Lou just what Lou just said is relevant. Um, <laughs> oh. Not, well, not here's the thing. It's... There, okay. Okay. I'll go back to the beginning of this. So, this dude Henry McCabe, he was a uh, an auditor, I believe he was. Okay. Um, and he was out drinking one night and got dropped off at a gas station by his friends. He was fucking drunk. Um, I think he was in no condition to walk home, um, mm-hmm. but they didn't mind driving. Uh, I think you know, and when someone's that drunk, I think you don't want to fight with them. Uh, and then just drops off the map. Um, goes off the grid for a while and goes missing for two fucking months. Oh, oh, oh so he's dead, dead. Oh, um, oh <laughs> I read about this. It's where yeah. the the friend had uh, the his keys and friend wallet. Friend had his keys. And all that. Other friend had his wallet, and those two were immediately prime suspects. Um, mm-hmm. Right. So uh, I mean, the night he goes missing, well, ha- first of all, there's a phone call. There's no audio from. He called his wife and was um, being kind of weird and said he had been shot. Oh, um, and there was. She said he. Heard, she heard uh, growls and grunts in that video in that call as well, um, and then got this voicemail. Um, and for those who can't hear the voicemail, uh, it's pretty fucking bizarre. Uh, you can't make out any words at all. Um, no. and it's mostly screaming of a uh, you know, high pitched screaming, and then like a like a wookie growl. It's like it's like between a growl and a gurgle. Yeah, yeah. It's it's weird sounding. Um, and then there's, there was a full version of this voicemail out on the internet at some point, and I even looked for it, and I found people saying, oh, yeah, you used to be able to hear the whole thing, and every iteration of it is gone. Every single one. 
Uh, yeah, Psy- only, Psy- these, only, these, <laughs> only these fucking cut up clips exist with news footage on them. Um, but at the end of the voicemail, I guess, uh, all the grunts, growls, and screams cease, and someone else says, stop it. And that's, <laughs> that's the end of the fucking voicemail. What? Stop it. Stop I, it. If, if you hadn't mentioned the stop it part, my initial theory would have been that the uh, the Timothy Treadwell audio had become sentient <laughs> and was out killing with the sounds that no one should ever hear. You should, you should bury this tape. No, you should burn it. No one should hear this. You should freeze it in carbonite. <laughs> except you know after, except after I'm me. Who fucking Timothy Treadwell was. And I was uh, like, oh, you're doing Werner Herzog. That's yes, right. Very Grizzly man. poorly at that. No, yeah. go eat your thumb. Eat your oh, finger. I, I did not find Nessie at the bottom of Loch Ness. But I did I find, find a delicious despair. shoe full of NyQuil. <laughs> it doesn't matter if we are destroying this planet. <laughs> um, and and now I am in the Mandalorian. Talking. <laughs> anyway, uh, so this guy goes missing for a full fucking two months. And uh, some guy goes out kayaking and finds this guy dead in a, in a river. Oh, all right. All right. Um, they do an autopsy. There's no signs of foul play, no injuries, no cuts, bruises, gunshot wounds, nothing. Like, oh, wow. not um, even not even injuries that he would sustain, like falling <coughs> into a river. Nothing. Did they do a toxicology report? Um, there was nothing. Not, I haven't seen anything come out from that. I mean, he also like two months later. Like, I don't know what would be. Uh, there would yeah. still be stuff in the tissue. Yeah, mm-hmm. and in the stomach even. Yeah, stomach yeah. contents and yeah. Yeah, yeah. and they they ruled his death as non-suspicious. Which what? Is, yeah. I mean, given the certain, like they, they said, no foul play is suspected. Basically, he I, wandered off and drowned and then got washed to wherever they found him. After hmm. making that bizarre-ass fucking sound on that fucking voicemail. Uh, okay. might be, wait, the, did you say he drowned? Uh, I mean, likely. Like they said, they said no sign of foul play. That's really weird. Yeah. yeah but you can yeah. drown very easily in like... A two you inches can. of pun- like a you can drown a few, yeah. You can drown a few inches of water. But if you're making those mm-hmm. noises, you gotta like. There's gotta be foul play, right? No, right. I, he. The thing is, like, if he's that drunk, do they ever release his history? Like, he legitimately could have like then gone and gotten some drugs and then got messed up he's and just like, like uh, and well, just got and messy. I, I, I found uh, I found a Reddit thread about it, and uh, it's it's on a fucking Sasquatch subreddit, of course. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right, right, right. Yeah. <laughs> like I, I typed Henry McKay voicemail, and it, it kicked me over to the Sa- it just says Sasquatch, our Sasquatch. <laughs> I'm sorry, Squatching. our Bigfoot. Um, so wait, so Bigfoot killed him? Is that what you're saying? I really? dealt with Bigfoot before. That was not the sound of a Bigfoot. <laughs> he was done killed by a Bigfoot. Um, no, that was a uh, that was a Nebraska Bigfoot. Um, yeah, was but it was different. was it the real one or was it like the five, was it five million dollar man robot one that the U.S. government created? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> probably the robot one. I'm sorry, um, what? Oh, you don't. That's you like one of the most that? famous things ever. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. the million dollar man fought a Bigfoot twice. Real, what, He's in two episodes. Andre the Giant? Wasn't yes, that one of yeah, one of them is Andre the Giant yeah. in the costume. And it's he also re- fights a bear that's revealed to be a robot, I think. Uh, I think that's Hell the yeah. second Sa- Sasquatch episode. He, Sasquatch is in two different episodes. I didn't watch enough of that show. <laughs> yeah. Because um, mm. it, it was always on after the Hulk, and I was like, I'm done now. And just turn the TV <laughs> on. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you heard dun 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 dun. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, back to the guy who was killed by an aquatic werewolf. Um, I, <laughs> I, I mean, I, something, in a, like a were. Uh, uh, where are her? Oh, well, it I just it it boggles me that he he didn't have any. I mean, and it was two months later, so his body obviously was somewhat decomposed. Um, In the water. Wouldn't, yeah, he wouldn't have any obvious signs of like trauma that would have led him to fall into the water. Like, I mean, I've been I've been very drunk before. I've been very drunk so much that you fall down a lot, and it's like the yeah. next day you might not know exactly how that happened, but you know you hurt yourself. Mm-hmm. Thing nice is also, if, you're that, if you're that if you're that drunk, um like how do you have one the wherewithal to call someone 
Let alone yeah. your wife, like your wife. Oh, well, yeah. it could be he could Bro, be just hitting like, most recent thing. It does say um, I found the thing. It says that he did drown, and the place was four miles away. Yes, uh, right. Uh, I think I, I think I'm coming up with a theory, but I, I want to keep on exploring what we do know so far before theorizing because but, uh, I came I came across this thread on the uh, R Bigfoot. Um, and it was from a guy who works at a, uh, a housing. Uh, he works with people with addictions in housing complexes. Um, and he's made it a point to mention uh, that people who overdose on GHB. Um, oh, God. Yeah, which is a drug I don't know anything about. GHB um, is the original date rate drug. Date, date yeah. rate drug and okay. it could have like a million different things in it. And yeah, that yeah. goes with my theory, actually. And kinda, you usually, you're supposed to take like, I not only know this from listening to a you like, um, shit. I can't remember the comedian's name now, but he told a story about it. you're supposed to only do like a cap of a water bottle amount of it. Yes. Mm. Yep. Oh. Um, and it could have it's heroin in it, speed. Like it's like a mixture of a whole bunch of different crap. That's never good when like they're like only like you know see this the only oh, drink out of a, oh, a it bottle was cap. the it was Tom Segura's. This is not happening, and he took a swig of it from a milk jug. Oh, 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 yes. Good, good <laughs> God. Which is funny because someone replied to this guy and said, uh, I think he was at a house party and um, he grabbed a bottle of water they thought was water, but it was someone's full bottle of GHB. Why were, would. Because that's how you were, sell it. That's how you sell they it. Were, they were selling hits of it. Yes, that's what you do. This yeah. is like, it's like a 90s drug. Yeah, no. His friend spent the rest of the night getting uh, someone to help him puke up all of that because, uh, like, he was probably about to go nuclear, and he's lucky to be alive. Yeah, they, <laughs> Christ. In the one I was talking about, they, the doctor literally told him he's like, the only reason you're alive is because you're fat. <laughs> <laughs> Got him. Gross mode. Um, but this guy who said he works with uh, addictions posted some like he put videos up. One of them, like one of them, was taken down. Uh, and one of them was featured someone who starts screaming uh, when you go into a GHB overdose. Now, mm. here's the thing with this. They only sound somewhat similar to whatever the fuck is happening in this voicemail. And also, like, back to the motor functions thing, this dude's arms, fi- his limbs and fingers are in 11 different directions all at once. He can't oh. sit still. His arms are bending in ways he shouldn't be able to bend them. He's sitting in ways that look physically uncomfortable. Like, he has no control over what's happening with his butt. Well, maybe he has his phone. He, like, hits a button to call his wife. He starts, like, stumbling. The friends don't drop him off where they said. They drop him off in this other spot because he's, like, freaking out. And then it's somebody saying stop it to him when he's, like, freaking out. Well, with the... That's the thing, though. With the friends thing... If if I remember what I read correctly, the reason why the one guy who had his wallet was suspected was because he said, no, I dropped him off at this gas station. They had no video of him being dropped off there. And then like a, different a gas week station. later, yeah, it was a different <laughs> gas station that they had video of him being dropped off there. Yeah. And he was fine at the time. So I – I'm kind of wondering if he was so drunk, he got – where. what state did this take place in? Oh, if shit. you know. Uh, I think – I think it was California. Um, oh, I, mean, I thought it, it was really Indiana. It really doesn't make a difference for this theory, but I'm wondering if he was – Minnesota. Probably, okay, Minas, oh, Minnesota. 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 I told you it was the goddamn aquatic whale. Um, <laughs> it fucking had to be Minnesota. <laughs> There's a secret, secret FEMA base that's been training. Um, anyways. <laughs> <it's>, <laughs> I, Let's say very drunk gets dropped off at a gas station at whatever time in the morning it is. I mean, it's it's Minnesota, so it's it's probably two in the morning or so. I guess they don't have super late drinking laws there. Um, mm-hmm. And he gets propositioned by someone who might be, oh, I don't know, a woman who works the oldest profession on earth, mm. right? And you mean a priest, right? Yes, yes. 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 Oh, you're talking priest. about a, yes. you're talking about a honeypot situation, and they um, right. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, then they pray all night. <laughs> exactly. Well, somebody's on their knees. 
Yeah. Oh well, exactly. yeah. Exactly. Um, yeah. But praying to stop. That's what priests do, right? They 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 have sex with people for money. What right. did this guy? <laughs> no, that other people pay them to have sex with their children. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh no. Um, oh. So what did what did this guy do for a living? If an anybody, auditor. it was an auditor. So he 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 probably had the look of having some money. I'm wondering if this potential uh, lady of the night might have, I don't know, decided to try and roll this guy and overdosed him on something. And, oh yeah, dosing him wouldn't make sense. Yeah, and dumped right. him somewhere. Yeah, well, but well, he didn't have his wallet. He didn't have his wallet on it. Yeah, so he couldn't right. pay. Yeah, no wallet. So they got yeah. pissed and dosed him and dumped him. Oh yeah, down the road too. Yeah. Well, could, yeah. well, here's the thing. So the four months later thing, that makes me think he died and then somebody put him on ice or something to that effect. Um, um, it's a, they it's haven't, it, it, it depends. Like if you're in water, um, yeah. I only know this from... Do we know when, he, when did he actually go missing? That's the other... He went missing the theory. night of the voicemail. But when, when was that recorded, I guess, is what I'm asking. Well, two months That's, prior to him being found. Yeah, the same night that he was dropped off, he got right. two months after. Wife. Yeah, what he called his wife. is what I'm asking. <laughs> oh, uh, 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 September 2015. Okay. Um, it could be cold. Later. It could be cold enough for, like, cold weather. In Minnesota? In Minnesota, yeah. yeah that's yeah. winter time. Possibly. Well, here's the thing. A body will, like, first sink. And then yep. until it starts to biodegrade, then it gets filled up with gases and floats up. Yep. yep. Right. But it's the winter in Minnesota. Like that stuff is going to get sl- slowed it, down. It, so he could have been sunk for body in a frozen lake. Well, it might Minnesota. not be frozen. It would just be like really cold. Uh, and what, yeah. two months later is November. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. Uh, uh, what if he was – like how long is he dead? Like – they were like it's probably sad. way okay. too long to do that's de-comp. the thing like i don't i don't think there was a, a like a i didn't find a window of like a uh, approximate time of death in relation to when he was found there's okay, like yeah. not a lot of great information there apparently is a bunch of podcasts on this though there's there's a bunch of weird shit about it too because apparently like uh when the wife was later questioned it was found out that she was withholding information mm-hmm. um and was working closely with um, this, like, I can't remember the exact name, but like, they're like a Liberian uh, community like group that mm-hmm. uh, helps deal with people who were either affected or were directly involved in the Liberian Civil War who were displaced, I guess. Oh, no. and they're like, a, they're like a, hunting those and bastards. They're like a, and they're, in that community, they're like a liaison between the community and the police. And this woman worked very closely with them. And I guess people in the community are like, well, if he was involved somehow with like, you know, maybe someone from the old war found him, like something on those lines. Maybe it's connected to the Civil War. Um, but I, I don't know. Like, does, does okay. it really so here's an interesting fact. His wife was in California. At the time? Okay. Yes. Hmm. Mm. Well, I think they also, I think I read somewhere that they were getting a divorce. Which makes sense why she's in California and he's in Minnesota. Yeah. Yeah. Which I do have to say, and I don't know why I know this, but like Minnesota is like a very, it's like one of the places where they send a lot of African immigrants. Yeah. Because that's where all the, all the guys that filmed, um, uh, I'm the captain now. They're all, yeah. Captain Phillips. They're all, they all live in Minnesota. Yeah. Minnesota or Michigan. Yeah. I vaguely remember one of you guys mentioning that. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, it's a huge community specifically for, but they are what is that Somali? But like it is one of those places mm-hmm. that like the Midwest um, in general is becoming sure, the word for that type of thing. I'm sure these people are happy to be out of whatever situations they were in in the countries they're originally from. But that's mm-hmm. a real dick move to take people who are from a very warm climate and be like, "Here's Minnesota, fuckers. <laughs> See ya. Here's the middle of goddamn nowhere where it's cold." Right, um, we're gonna move you to Detroit. And <laughs> no, 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 they're not. They're not just sending them to Detroit. They're in Minnesota. No, they're <laughs> yeah, yeah. Some of the people who, um, the people who are getting in, who are from, uh, oh, fucking, like Central and South America uh, and stuff. No, uh, the people coming in through the, uh, I'm forgetting all the words today. Um, I'm just. I'm they're all how to present them. <laughs> um. 
Oh God. The things that you speak with. <laughs> Lift your arms up is one shaky. <laughs> I just get replaced by two icons on the hangouts. Arlen, no! Um, you just start slurring. <laughs> no, we just start hearing that same gurgling sound. <laughs> Syria, that's the word I'm trying to find. Uh, there you go. Uh, no, a lot of Syrians are getting sent to Detroit, and they're living in Detroit. And Detroit is fuck? actually like, getting like no better. In those places, it's 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 a, it's slightly better. There's it's like a, from one DMC to another DMC. What the? Fuck? I don't know. Hey, there's I mean, there's, yeah, there's really less bombs, but there's more hipsters. There's less bombs, but there's more bears. Yeah. yeah. Right. Yeah. Um. So, and actually, I read uh, that for some reason, uh, this case. And have you guys heard of Missing Four One One? No. Missing Four One One is apparently this like. It's this umbrella of fascinating, cases, fascinating cases about people, specifically armed hunters, who just go fucking missing and are never found in oh. several national parks and yeah. woods. Oh, oh, okay. No, that's it's just national parks, yeah, it's not just, just it's not yeah. just armed hunters. It's it's just across people. the board. I'm actually yeah. Yeah. I'm actually borrowing the first book from my friend's wife. Yeah. Like, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's it's with absolutely yeah. no evidence. Like like yeah, there's one of the big mm-hmm. places is actually like the Appalachian Trail because people like hike the entire thing oh, that's, that's, and yeah, they just that's, that's go. Away. And I guess no. there's, a doc- there's a documentary coming out called Missing Four One One. Like no, it, it is out. It's on. Oh, it's, uh, out? it's on Hulu. Yeah, it's on Hulu right now. Oh, yeah. yeah, I gotta watch. But it. there's there's supposed. To, I watched part of it before. It's not that great. The there's a new one that's supposed to be coming out though. That's supposed to be better. And okay. as a side note, one of my absolute favorite creepy pastas is actually based heavily around that. The uh, rescue. Uh, what is it? Oh, Search yeah. and Rescue Woods. Oh, it's so good. Yeah, that's they took a lot of inspiration from the uh, really missing four one one. It is yeah, really read good. them at least. Yeah. Okay. I don't, I don't mm-hmm. know if there's audio of them. There but, is. Yeah. There okay. is. Mr. Creepy Pasta does it, and it's a very good. Like. Ooh, um, um, no. But, um, yeah, no. It sounds bad, but it's actually really good. <laughs> my name is horrendous. Anyways, yeah. back to your story, Connor. Um, that's really kind of where this all uh, ends because, like, there's been no updates ever since. Mm. Um. And everyone just has theories, and no one knows what the fuck happened to this dude. That's so weird. <sighs> but again, there's two there's two minutes of audio in that voicemail. Yeah, and it's and, all just that. And there is video of him being dropped off. So like those guys yeah. weren't lying. So yeah. yeah. Um, and yeah. like I don't like to, like and the fact that there's another voice that says stop it, and it's always been described as another voice, not his. Like I think he was identified yeah. as somebody else. Uh, well, if it was yeah, if it was his, I would assume that he's talking to himself and that he's sort of having like a psychotic break induced by the drugs. Um, yeah, but yeah, yeah, he could have always been given something at the bar, and his friends were just like, "You suck! Like you're too drunk," and mm-hmm. he's not really drunk; he's tripping his balls off. Yeah, too. Yeah. 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 I think he was drugged, and then somebody took advantage of him, yeah. and. Yeah, somehow he ended up in a in a river. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Alternatively, the titanium teeth of the female <laughs> aqua werewolf might be sharper <laughs> than diamond, but they can also be so gentle as to carry a man to the water and let him drown. <laughs> I like how someone's with like Windows audio, yes. like <laughs> I was punctuation. I was wondering if anybody else heard that besides me. No, don't um, worry about it. But that's it for my entry. There's there's no resolution to it. I was try I was trying to pick a weird uh, mm. missing persons case, and like I found there was one more. It was with this guy who like I'll just skim over. I think he went to a town in like England or like I think in Europe, and like was hang out hung out there for a few days, checked into the local hotel, and kept leaving with weird purple bags but never returning with the purple bags um okay and then like a few days and like after like a week of staying there someone found him dead in the beach oh <laughs> got him sounds like he got involved in drugs yeah that sounds yeah. very yeah. drug yeah. yeah it sounds like, sounds like yeah. Yeah. and especially yeah. if he was staying at hostels like yeah yeah and he, he signed in under a pseudonym Oh um, yeah. Oh yeah. And I, and like yeah. I guess the last day he was there, he 
he checked out, like he did check out the hotel eventually, but didn't leave with any luggage. Ah. Uh, mm. Yeah. Yeah, and there's video. There, there's video of him around town too. Like people scooped up, like I think every piece of surveillance video uh, of this guy in town. It's really bizarre because he's, he's hitting specific places. Yeah, it sounds like he's doing drug drops. Yeah, I, yeah. I do think it, that reminds me of like the craziest one, which everyone's heard of, which is was it the Cecil Hotel one? Yeah, like with the one. Yeah, yeah. 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 Like, yeah, everybody knows that. He's yeah, like, we've covered that here. Yeah, pretty sure. Ooh. Yeah, we did. Yeah, I'm yeah, saying it yeah, just reminds yeah. me of it. I wasn't picking fake it up. Fake fan. Fake fan. <laughs> Very uncomfortable with all these white people yelling at me. Hold <laughs> <laughs> oh, on, let me get my MAGA hat. Oh, oh. oh I can talk down to your property. Yeah. Um, I was at a birthday uh, party right, today with, will... with a bunch of South Jersey oh. people that li- live uh, by Atlantic City. And they were very interesting. Oh, oh boy. How Dude. Enough. I haven't been to Atlantic City in over a decade, but the last time I went, it was a fucking shithole. Yeah, th- yeah, I wasn't there. They were they were, they came from there to the other place. <laughs> the, the only thing I've ever heard about Atlantic City is that you don't actually go out on the boardwalk because the homeless people will rise up like chuds to try and attack you. Let me tell you something, okay? Real quick, I was there at night by myself because for a while it was a place I like to go if I wanted to just get the fuck away from everything. Um, because I like, I like that environment. And, like, for a while, it didn't – it wasn't like that when I was a kid. Um, and even, in like, as a young adult, it wasn't like that. But then, like, one night I go out there, um, and it's like, it's, like, dusk. And I'm walking along on the boardwalk, and, like, from the fucking shadows, a homeless man slash crackhead, like, <laughs> oh, yeah. popping out of the dark, asking for change. But he's holding his change cup with his stump of an arm pressed against his chest in the cup. Oh, <laughs> poor guy. I was like, man who he's killed with a bicycle. But um, yeah. see, what you do there is that you put a quarter, you put a quarter on the ground, and you slowly back away. <laughs> Come eat chicken um, under the boardwalk. But with I, couldn't, me. I couldn't hear. I couldn't quite make out what he said because I had headphones in, so I. I just kind of was startled and like quickly jogged away. <laughs> I have all this raw God. work. I was like, ah! Thank God this story doesn't end with Connor just like pushing this dude down and taking him out. And I something. let me tell you something. I got myself Remember, some fun. I, I okay, like, I, like, like, Atlantic City is a very open area. Like you can see down for miles. That thing. There was like. 15 people within my immediate eyesight of like way down the boardwalk, like in the parking lots behind me on the beach and to my left and right. There's fucking nobody out there. That guy had no money. Okay. Yes. Right. All right. Uh, also, anyway. if you would have touched him, you would have gotten hepatitis. Did you turn around? And, <laughs> I have something to show you. You're not going to like it. Yes. And then he no, turned no, into no, bugs. No. God damn it, Eric. <laughs> um, uh, anyway, I'll pass it off to whoever wants to go next. <laughs> oh, God. Who wants to go next? Well, I don't have anything, so you guys can go. Okay, I guess I'll go next. So, okay. All right, all right, all right. I'm kind of, like, obsessed with this this thing. Uh, all right. <laughs> so, there's this phenomenon. Uh, they're called black-eyed children. Oh, oh shit. Do you, do you, know, do you yes. know what I'm talking about? I do. Yeah. So, yeah. The basic gist, gist is like that. There's these, that, like, there's these children who will like come to your house and like ring the doorbell, and they'll like they'll talk to you, and like try to get get you to like let them in the house. Uh, the only thing is like eventually you'll notice that their eyes are black. And, How do you eventually notice? Well, it, you just, <laughs> I guess. Dude, listen, all right? Hold on, I'm getting there. I'm getting there. It's right. called a perception filter, Lou. Get so, get on. There's like, there like, there's people who report this who are like, they're like almost hypnotized by these children. Like you, you don't, you talk to them and you're like, you don't even like, you don't think to look them in the eyes. Like you, it's just a normal conversation to you. But me, meanwhile, fucking the antichrist is in front of you. <laughs> um, but anyways, so the weird part is, if you let them in the house, you will get sick like a week later. So like, if this is like, like a psychological thing. Like, it's really interesting because it, it's just your body, like, 
personifying death or something like that. Hmm. Hmm. Oh, so you're saying that you, people aren't really, they may not be seeing actual yeah. children. It's like a weird shared hallucination. Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like it's like uh, amperform, uh, amperformorphized like sickness. Well, yeah, have like, you heard of that? Have you heard of that that the one face like hundreds of people? Yes. Oh my god! I love oh that. yeah, the, yeah. Have you dreamed this man? Yeah. yeah. I think I think they're all wet dreams. I think they all want to fuck that guy. Yes. <laughs> have you seen the hog on that guy? Of course. <laughs> That's not, that guy's fucking dopey looking. Yeah, he's just like a goofy white guy. He looks like the teacher from Stand by Me. <laughs> How do I reach these kids? Specific reference. <laughs> he does. He look at Wait, him. don't you mean stand and deliver? Stand by me is about the coming of age story. <laughs> yeah, Boy's going to find a dead body. Yeah, stand yeah, and deliver. Uh, yeah. You mean Edward James Omos from yeah. like Battlestar Galactica? <laughs> 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 no, you know what I'm talking about. The, the movie with the teacher who's like, how do I reach these kids? Yeah, he's talking to Mexican kids, and one of them is Lou Diamond Phillips when he's 47. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> like a 47 year old dude in the class. Yeah, it's 47 year old Lou Diamond Phillips, and he's trying to teach them geometry. Oh, like uh, Ralph, like Ralph Macchio on the Karate Kid. Yeah. 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 Or, or uh, Toby McGuire. Toby McGuire in Spider Man. <laughs> or Andrew Garfield in Spider Man. Yeah. Or Tom Holland. Oh. Anyway, <laughs> um, yeah, I I remember I've heard a lot of these black eyed kid stories before, just from cruising around creepy pastas, and and I remember the one actually I read most recently was from that uh that site that you had shared in the group chat, Connor. Graveyard uh, shift. Yes, there was the creepiest things that uh, truck drivers have seen, which yeah, oh, oh fuck, oh, some, no way. There was one that talked about like yeah, there were two little black eyed children that wanted to get to his cab because they were cold and blah 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 blah. And I, I don't remember how it ended exactly, but I just can remember I, the black eyed children being mentioned. Can I say just like the last one, meth? Yeah, that, well, that, I, yeah. Oh, that like, was that was where I was going to go with that story. Yes, like, yeah. like like I said though, like a lot of it is like associated with like illness, so like it makes me feel like maybe there's something in our brains that like causes this. Can I bring up? Uh, some- I've also read. I've also read from Graveyard Shift. Um, uh, a lot of people share stories about people in hospice care or like um, uh, terminal patients who talk about seeing men in hats. Like guys in yeah. like, like top hats or like not like I wouldn't say top hats, um, like bowler like, caps, yeah. yeah. the like, yeah. long like fedoras, like a black suited vaudevillian looking guy, like essentially uh, like, uh, my head. If that guy's taking me, oh out. god, so you um, see the specials bad. before you die? No. <laughs> see, I was thinking like guys and dolls. <laughs> 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 yeah, like something out of like something out of like th- their you know this time period, like something for a long time, like something almost like the stranger in Red Dead. Yeah. God. Oh, shit. Okay. Well, do you think that yeah. says their brains are like filling up with DMT and they're remembering like things from their past and childhood? Right. I don't know because like there's weird specific things that a lot of people seem to experience or share like in very specific circumstances involving illness can, and death. Can I ask a question with like these black eyed children and these kind of stories? I don't know if it's maybe it has happened to other people, but like, is this like a white thing? Cause <laughs> yes. no, 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 no. I, yes. I mean that in like, I don't do like people. I feel like this is like an af, maybe no. not white, but like an affluence thing. Like so if you're poor, you can't worry about ghosts. On Astonishing Legends, like there's a story about this happening in Mexico. Like, yeah. Oh, well, there are Mexican ghost stories, but like, yeah, there's yeah, also yeah, like, not like, Corona. Yeah, like, yeah. It's predominantly a Latin American thing now. Yeah. But I mean, like, yeah, in the same so. way of like the death metal in like Norway, like, is it like a thing of like. Uh, like a what? like your own like like your own psychic you thing of about? like death metal exists in Norway because they're all happy and they hate that they're happy. Oh, oh, yeah, they're, 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 yeah, yeah, it's kind of like a self-hating thing. Yeah, 
Mm. I, I, you know, let's let's be honest though. This is probably something that was pulled from another culture, and white people have just taken it. Well, it's like, yeah. I think uh, in Astonishing Legends, they kind of bring up the thing of like this could be like a like a uh, the evolutionary thing, like us being right. freaked out by people with like creatures with long limbs and stuff like that. Like, it oh, just, like yeah, well, like that. that makes sense because like a lot of that stuff is of like um. Like the scary things that kids talk about are usually resemble cats because yeah. ancient cats hunted people. Hell yeah. And like mm-hmm. when you jump when you feel something on your arm, that's because like you evolved to sense when bugs or like like snakes were crawling on you. Yeah, but I'm not scared of cats now. I'll punch Archie in the face and not feel the <laughs> Yeah. But if you die if you die, he'll he'll wait like two days to eat you. Yeah, he'll eat me, yeah. He'll yeah, wait. He'll eat your he'll eat your nose and your eyes first because they're the softest and easiest things to reach. Yeah. Yeah, and, I don't know. Uh, he's t- someone I work with just found out that cats will eat you if you die mm-hmm. uh, in their presence, and she was fucking horrified. It was grand to watch her face. Yeah, they're just oh, tiny yeah. little baby apex predators. Yep. Um, yeah. They're murder um, machines. We keep picking up and kissing. I am um, with with black eyed children. I I kind of got jaded on this because not because of the story itself or stories. Because a certain YouTube personality Chills. would just insinuate that anything that is like below four feet tall and out of focus in someone's drone video is a fucking black guy child. Every single fucking time. He's like, I don't know what this is. It's probably a black guy child. It's probably a black guy <laughs> child. Could be CGI. It would be CGI. It's like a blatantly fucking. It's like the fucking uh, like Gulper from Resident Evil fucking outbreak. Like, <laughs> I thought you were gonna say it's like now a go like, by my album. Topic, it's hot fire. Like topic. My favorite one. My favorite ones are, where, are the ones where he just makes stuff up. Where he's just like, somebody <laughs> died in this house or stuff like that. You come well, back. First of, all, first of all, first of all, he would never say someone died. Okay, he would say someone tragically lost their life in this location because for some reason he can't say die or death. No, it's he gets Is he Canadian? I don't know. That was that <laughs> accident you just did. But, he, but like, when you could just say someone was killed here, someone died here, there was an accident, someone died. Uh, he he then stretches like what could be three words into seventeen, and it drives me insane every single time. I gotta oh, gotta reach an life. average amount of time on every video so you can continue to get those yeah, likes get, and subscribes. You yeah, gotta, you gotta go past ten minutes or else. Yeah, well, yeah, he no, he cracked that code when he started inserting advertisements for his own fucking music videos in there, and then enticing you by saying, "We caught a ghost in one of them." <laughs> you should go our... watch it and look for it. I'm like, you fucking snake oil salesman. I'm not <laughs> watching your shitty hip hop video. Oh, I, thought, I thought he was implying that, uh, for a ghost. that we caught the ghost with my ill rhyming skills. <laughs> it was so hypnotized by the beat and my MCing that I had to put it on video. Um. But yeah, like he 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 talks about like like could this be a black? Shut up! Like <laughs> stop it! It's not. You're making me hate this cool thing. That's on, that's the th- on the Mothman. That's okay. the thing, Hunter. Like I'd never heard about the uh, people getting sick thing if they let them yeah. in. I'd only ever heard about people like, and then I realized they had black eyes, and I got out of there as quickly as possible, or something along those lines. That like it's it's always at the end of the story. They're like, and then I never went back to that abandoned soccer mill ever again. Yeah, it sounds yeah, like it's a, they... and my 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 hesitation with this kind of thing has always been like, there's there's no real like isolated contemporary stories that you can go track down and go like, Oh, that lends some like serious credibility. Well, there, is, uh-huh. there is one. Is? Cause I have never heard any. Especially so it, it's, it's the first one where, uh, this journalist, um, Brian Bethel, who's like a, like serious, like reputed, like, um, journalist. For screen uh, rant. No, no, no. <laughs> no, no. It's like this dude. Um, is he undisputed? You know, I can't remember what his exact credentials are, but I know he was like he's really respected. Like he's written books and stuff. Um but this guy, Brian Bethel, is like he's credited for having like the first like documented one. And it's hmm. interesting because like uh he can re- he recalls like minor details, like the movie that was playing at the theater was like Mortal Kombat. 
stuff like that. Wait, the first one or the second one? Because that the really lends to his credibility. No, it's the first one. Trust me, it's a good one. <laughs> so he was jamming out to like, do 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 do. Yeah, he was just in his car, just like thinking about reptiles, you know. Okay. Kato. <laughs> Thinking about Johnny Cage so punching we, Goro in the nuts. Sony Blade. Yeah. Hmm. It'd be fucking sick. <laughs> <laughs> Do you think Goro has more than two nuts? I, uh, I don't. Well, I mean, they are descended from dragons, aren't they? So, <laughs> so he he wouldn't have any. He would yeah, have okay. like a not a cloaca. The females would have a cloaca. <laughs> Well, no, I thought the males had cloaca too. You would Do think. You? No, I thought that was the whole point of cloaca. Right, was Arlo, I need you to go. No, the cloaca is like a thing that the eggs and like shit comes out of, and then it like kind of squats over them and fertilizes. But I thought, please, please I thought us. also male ducks had cloaca. Yeah, well, all right, all right. All right. Okay, all right. All right. Let's, let's go back to black eyed children just a little bit. Um, I'm so sorry, I started that. Okay, so he's. <laughs> Can I just say to go on way too long? <laughs> I, I was just <laughs> testing. I googled his name. He worked at Reporter Reporter Dash News. Wait, what? <laughs> okay, whatever. <laughs> whatever. Okay. I am a reporter for what? The news? <laughs> no, it says he was what, a, he is he was a columnist at Reporter Dash News. They talk about it in um in this Sonic Collections episode, which you should all. Check I, out. So I googled his name. The first thing that comes up is Brian Bethel and the Black Eyed Ch- the Black Eyed Kids, um, his- historic mysteries, and then there's like nothing else. It's like restaurants in Bethel, Maine. Oh shit! He's a black eyed child too. He's a black eyed adult. Thank you very yeah, much. Yeah, and like Ooh, my but- thing, I, my thing is like it's funny I invoked the Mothman earlier because. When people think of the Mothman, like, oh, you can pinpoint a very specific moment in history where something awful happened to hundreds of people, and everyone's like, yeah, we saw a weird red-eyed black thing over the fucking bridge, and people got weird phone calls that week, and people were having weird dreams that they all that were coincidentally <laughs> there shared. Was a, there was an Asian man named Apple driving around town. I don't oh. even uh, I don't oh, understand geez. that joke or reference. Okay. But the uh, the Mothman thing has some weird fucking Men in Black like sightings. Yeah, well, I think really the, the, yes. my favorite I, part of Men in Black is that a lot of it is probably UFO people that oh, are yeah, showing no, up in that, suits, that all, and those are the all actual Men in Black. <laughs> yes, so good. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, uh, is there anything else from the the Black Eyed Children you want to bring up or? Uh, no, I'm gonna punch one in the face if I ever see one. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. If you saw I'd one, wouldn't you just like kick it in the head? Yeah, I'm just right. the door. Also, like, can yeah, we come I'm in? Just, like, if, it's, it's a Chucky thing, you know. Yeah. Also, you see one kick in the with the advent of like video doorbells, wouldn't there be any sort of recording? Uh, well, no, because they didn't exist back then. Obviously, little God. <laughs> I'm back, just, then, I'm... back then, when they invented doorbell cameras, what, like last year? Like <laughs> last year. I'm just, I'm really hoping they finally realize they should kick out Fergie and get back to recording real quick. <laughs> I was holding that Black Eyed Peas joke the whole time. I, yeah, I almost said it before. Who, who's Which, your favorite Black Eyed Children? Mine's Will I Am. <laughs> mine's the one that's actually blind. <laughs> mine's, yeah, mine's the one that dances. Apple the app. <laughs> He's blind. <laughs> I'm glad. I'm glad you know more more names than just the first two. But uh, will I am a three? Because I don't know who the fuck yeah. those two people are. Here's another one. I don't remember his name at all. Well, they've all, all except for the blind one have been Vega. in movies. Yeah, yeah. he uh, was in Chun Li, and then who's in the worst movie? Him or what's his name? Being in Wolverine Origins. Will I am? Yeah. <laughs> right. He played uh, Wolverine for some reason. Uh, Probably Wolverine because people remember that movie. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway, who wants to go next? Um, uh, yeah, I can go. Okay. Uh, Mine's so not spooky. I will... Yeah, that's fine. Mine is kind of on the edge. Um, so we will... We'll see. Um, and I'm just going to start by reading a article, or, like, the beginning of a little subsection of a Wikipedia entry, and what I'm just... What I'm talking about will be obvious, once I get a couple uh, lines in. <clears throat> Some of the witnesses stated that they observed a woman in a polka dot dress in various locations throughout the Ambassador Hotel before and after oh, the assassination. Yep. Yep. One witness, 
Kennedy campaign worker, Sandra Serrano, reported uh. around 3, 11.30 p.m. She was sitting outside on a stairway that led to the embassy ballroom. When a woman Jeffrey and two Epstein. men, one of, <laughs> one of whom Serrano later stated was Sirhan, walked past her upstairs. Serrano said around 30 minutes later she heard noise that sounded like the backfire of an automobile and then saw the woman the one, and one of the men running from the scene. She yep. stated that the woman exclaimed, we shot him, we shot him. According to Serrano, when she asked the woman whom... To whom she referred, the woman said, Senator Kennedy. <gasps> so uh, yeah. that is, that's a lot of information up there. And if you're wondering Senator, who the subject is, Senator Kennedy. Yeah. Senator, so this is RFK. Oh, RFK. Yeah. Yeah. oh this shit. Is, okay. Yeah. I, w- I wasn't sure where I, you said Kennedy. I was like, oh, this is JFK. I, yeah, he meant just, you didn't hear him say Sirhan? Yeah. Uh, I, Sirhan. I, I, Sirhan. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I wasn't, I, I, I wasn't sure. Yep. Yeah. The minute the yeah. minute you said the polka dot dress and was seen at the hotel, I'm like, oh, I know which one you're talking about. See, I, right. I know. I, honestly, I know jack shit about this one. Yeah. Oh, okay. So this will be interesting. Mm. Then. So our subject yeah. is that woman. She is the woman in a polka dot dress, um, yeah. and she. The as I was looking for stuff to talk about, I was like, what's one that's sort of on the line of some other stuff and maybe has some answers to it. And the woman with the polka dot dress is fascinating. Because no one knows who she actually is. Um, they never found out where she came from, who she was working for. But there's a lot of evidence that suggests that she is a real person and that she is one of the people responsible for Robert Kennedy's assassination. So she worked for um, J- J- Jake or Hoover? Maybe. Uh, she might yeah. have. Well, see, that uh, was. Yeah. Oh, go ahead, Arlen. Go ahead. This no, is yours yeah. still. Okay. Well, yeah. Um, so, and I'm just going to lay out the basic premise before I fill in uh, other details. But the basic premise of most conspiracies about this story is that uh, Sirhan Sirhan, who is the person who's in prison now for shooting uh, Robert Kennedy, that he was under some sort of trance or hypnotism uh, at the hands of this woman. Uh, yeah, it's like uh, main, uh, Manchurian candidate kind of thing. You're right, yes. And that it was basically part of some larger government <laughs> conspiracy or just maybe an organization. This is just a plot of season one of Ages of Shield. It is. It's hmm. very well so the polka dot dress thing, that's that's a knowing reference to this. Um I'm pretty sure. That's why I, she's pretty in much she's got a dress. Flower dress, yeah. Yeah. Um but yeah, so that's the basic conspiracy that he was used by this so person. Wait. No, Ike Perlmutter did it. Yeah, Ike <laughs> Perlmutter totally did it. That, yes. that makes sense. No, that he, he would, really does work. He would not because, use a woman. Uh, he Sirhan think that Sirhan was Palestinian, and his reasoning for killing RFK had to do with Israel and Palestine. And it, it wasn't even that it um, it wasn't even that Robert was actually doing anything necessarily. It was just that he was talking about it. It's that he was addressing what was going on. Oh, that's um, great. Okay, cool. And that's kind of flimsy. Uh, so if I was a yeah. if I was an Israeli person trying to deflect the blame uh, from Israel being responsible for this assassination, I would make the killer a Palestinian. That's that that's what I would do. So that makes a lot of sense, actually. Yeah, um, yeah. So we might have actually stumbled onto the real person who was <laughs> he was the third man um, as described. See, I oh, go ahead. Do you have more? Do you have to say? No, I, 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 I'm actually interested in what you have to add because it might lead into something. Well, it's it's not a whole lot. Um, the one other thing that was interesting was that uh, Sirhan Sirhan and uh, and uh, fuck, what's his face? Um, Lee Harvey Oswald were actually at the same military base at the same time oh, yeah. Whoa. for their training. Which is oh, also shit. where Lee Harvey Oswald supposedly was indoctrinated under MK Ultra. Um, mm-hmm. But the other thing with the polka dot dressed woman, what's that, Hunter? I said not looking good. No, <laughs> um, with the polka dot dressed woman, like I'm, I'm wondering if she was his handler. 
mm-hmm. like being that he he didn't seem all that stable. Like I know when when they got him like for shooting Robert Kennedy, like he kind of he knew what he did, but he also didn't understand. I think the gravity of what he did, which makes me think he wasn't exactly one hundred percent with it when he did mm-hmm. all of it, which makes me wonder if she was either CIA or potentially hired by Israeli forces. And you're to... saying like they like like they lost the leash essentially for a few mm, minutes? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe pretty much. Well that's no, actually, I don't even think that I don't even think they lost the leash. I think she was there for that to be done and she just did a bad job of keeping herself hidden. Like, I was yeah. gonna say because like I expected to type this into Google and find uh, no pictures. There's nope, there's quite, pictures. There's quite a few. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it's um, it's like the babushka woman from the JFK shooting. Yeah. Right. Like this woman stands out like a sore fucking thumb. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe she wanted to be seen. Well, because what happened is that they basically brought in every woman <laughs> who was who was seen wearing a polka dot dress that night. Um, and they brought them all in for questioning, and they took their polka dot dresses as evidence. Um, that just because, that's creepy. Yeah. That's, just, that's not right. Yeah. We should start a hashtag about that. <laughs> just as when I was in the Marines, we took, we took dresses every night. We had to now, sniff the scraps of these now, polka now, dot like, dresses. Depending on like how tall your tinfoil hat is, like... Like, do we put any stock in like the shared Kennedy deaths? Like, do you think? Um, I, no, I think there's a lot to be yeah. put into this yeah. being shared. Yeah. It's if it if it wasn't the CIA, it was it was the mob. If the mob, not both right. of them working together. I, if it I, wasn't I, them, I, it was the Catholic Church. Like, because like, 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 like one Kennedy is assassination, two Kennedys is weird, or the, the third one died in a plane crash. He, well, yeah, mm-hmm. and, and another well, one no, killed his one side piece. Drowned in a car. No, 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 yeah. no, no, no. The that other one, Kennedy. no, Ted Kennedy, like drove his car off a bridge with his side piece and left her to drown in the car, and then went home and took a nap. Oh, oh yeah, well, he almost drowned. We've all been there. Yeah, but he yeah, let he, his side piece drown, and then he went. Oh home. yeah, she had it coming. He was done. <laughs> uh, <with her. laughs> so I, 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 uh, I honestly think it was a mob. Yeah, I think it was a combination. It been. I think so, it's so. This is this is interesting that you're saying the mob because I, I was so I, I did like a minor amount of research, and I'll just jump to this because it's fascinating. And Hunter, I think if you listen to certain up to a certain point in the last podcast, you might know what I'm referring to. But there's an interview with Sirhan Sirhan. I can't remember if it's very early or if it's very recent where he's talking about what she said to him or what he can make yeah. out from his memory. Uh, and they were meeting in a coffee shop, and she says something to the, uh, something similar to, they'll probably hurt me if they find out that I'm doing this, yeah. if they find out that I'm involved. And then at some point she says something about being involved with the Rosicrucian Order. the fuck is that? Oh, it's, uh, magic. It's like a... Uh... Uh, like spiritual Christians, they're, well, they're also they're tied to uh, the Freemasons. To yes, extent, if I remember correctly. they yeah. are where like, like was it Crowley came out of? It's funny thing because when I was looking for stuff, there's actually Rosicrucian, uh, 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 not temple but uh, pyramids that were built in Bucks County, PA. Oh, mm. nice. Oh, yeah. Was one. yeah, look it up. Look it up on the uh, weird uh, PA website it's, from the it's guys who did the weird New Jersey like, set. Right. If you look at like, like, into the mob connections, like, I just I don't know. I feel like that's the most likely. I mean, I here, here's my it, my read on it personally is if, after hearing the Rosicrucians thing, it makes me actually think that the church had something in. Had some involvement in this. Okay, but, but I think everybody had something to do with it. Yeah, yeah. But why? My thing is like, why them? Like, what did the? Because it seems like it was like a th- like a over time like a three pronged attack. Like, because you got you got JFK, uh, and then this happened, and then what was it? Robert Kennedy was he was this junior who got died in the plane crash? 
His son, um, yes, JFK Jr. Yeah, yeah. yeah so, JFK. Not just, so the Kennedys, I think it's just those two. It's the two main Kennedys, but the third one that kind of has to be involved in here is MLK. Yes, um, and the three of them are often put together. They're sort well, of in a triumphant in history. And there's and one person that connects uh, the three of them. Right. Which yep. is J. Edgar Hoover. Yep. <laughs> right. Yes. In his and pretty, I, I think pretty that's, sundress. That's why I think <laughs> oh, the government was he the lady in pink? Was he the polka dot lady? Oh, ooh, that's a new twist. <laughs> that's good. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No. It's, um, go ahead. Oh, uh, I was gonna say. There are certain things that we know to be true. Um, we kind of know that uh, Project Paperclip is probably was probably bigger than we thought it was. Yeah. Um, well, it probably. You, well, I I also read that like the Project Paperclip was when we took over the German scientists, right? Yeah. yeah. We yeah. we took a, we took a bunch because Russia was also well, doing the same thing. I I also found out, and Hunter, you watched the same podcast, so you should probably have all the information I have. That woman who was on Joe Rogan's podcast, who had those books about like um, uh, mm-hmm. like uh, 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 what was it Bill Lazar? What that guy? Like? Yes. Uh, yeah. Bob Lazar. Bob, Bob Lazar. Lazar. Uh, Bob Lazar, her talking to like uh, like retired CIA assassins and stuff like that. Um, yeah. Oh shit! Where was I going with this? Fuck. I just lost my train of thought. Um, <laughs> gone. Oh no. The woman. Oh, the woman on Joe Rogan. Oh, yeah, I, okay. Well, I'll take over while you think about it for a second. Uh, I think my point was though that part of how they got some of those Germans here. Oh, okay. Got it. Church. All right. It's back. It's back. Um, <laughs> I didn't know that we took, like, we didn't take, like, oh, you worked at this, you know, in a no, lab no, in Germany? No, 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 no. No, 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 like no, no, no. The, the fucking Nazis put us on the moon. Yeah, yeah. no, no. Yeah. NASA Bernard von Braun was, yeah. would have been part of the yeah, uh, and, you know, Norman and you know what trials. gave him a, you know what, you know what gave him away and started giving Nazis away in NASA was their dueling scars. Right. Well, also, there's a there was a town around there called Germantown because mm. they all brought their families over with them. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. And the town had signage in German. Their shops were all in German. Well, after World War II, just living in that town, it's like, it's, oh, shit. <laughs> They're here. <laughs> well, <laughs> you fall asleep in, like, 1939, right, as rumors of war are starting. Well, what's it, like you have that at the same time. Um, if you guys have, I can't remember. It's, uh, his name's Tim Kennedy. He was a MMA fighter, but he was also like in the army. He has a show on History Channel, and they went mm. to Argentina, I believe. Oh, the fucking boys. Right. Yes, and there's mm-hmm. a town where they're all blonde hair, blue eyed people, and all the signs are in mm-hmm. German, and they're yep. basically like not even hiding the fact of who they all are. Oh yeah, mm-hmm. they have they have Nazi memorabilia. Like, yeah, well that's where yeah. um isn't that where uh, Mengele was died right? He had a yeah. heart attack mm-hmm. while he was like in the ocean. Yeah, yeah. heart attack. And they got Close. there because of the Catholic Church. So I think yeah. my wh- I think my larger point was that all of these entities that wanted Kennedy dead, they are all in some way connected. Um, the CIA's predecessor, the OSS, was working with the Church to get Nazis into America and to get them to South America. Um, The mob, La Costa Nostra, uh, they do their money and their loans through the church, through the uh, Roman Catholic bank. And they were also Uh, pissed at Joe Kennedy because of the whole bootlegging stuff. Yep. Yep. Which again connects us back to the church. And then... Well, wasn't, uh, wasn't Joe Kennedy also a union breaker? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yep. Yeah. They were they in general also here's the thing. They were two Catholic politicians before Vatican II. Um and I think it's before Vatican II. Yes, no, uh, you I believe you're correct. It's before Vatican II, and for those who don't know what that means, Mel Gibson and his father moved to Australia because of Vatican II. The, well, his father Mel Gibson's was, father Mel Gibson's yeah. father moved him when he was a child and his family yeah. to Australia. Yes. Because he was extremely Catholic uh, and he didn't like Vatican II. That's why it's, uh, that's why yeah, it's much, Max. much more conservative. <laughs> let's, let's be 
be honest, Mel Gibson's dad also didn't like a lot of other things other than... Well, <laughs> that's <laughs> true, too. He did, there are a lot of things he didn't like. Um, many, many things. But Vatican II hadn't happened yet. And these were two Catholic politicians who, despite what they might have said, they presented a very liberal vision of the world. Um, and there were lots of rumors of them having sex parties with Marilyn Monroe, among Hell other people. Yeah. Um, and probably, you know, just na- name a person. They probably hung out with everybody who was swinging at that time. Her, I mean, her death's fucking weird, too. Her death is really fucking bizarre. Yeah, um, she got so too close. Two, yeah, it's two Catholics, two prominent Catholics. So the conservative Catholic Church at that time wouldn't like that. They wouldn't like that that would sort of create this potential schism with the church, which eventually forces them to do the Vatican II movement. Um, yeah, and then the CIA like and, Je- and the FBI, yeah. even though they don't like each other, there was one thing in the 60s and the 70s and the 80s that they both could agree on, um, and it was that they hated communists. Um, or that any or anybody that could lead Americans towards a more communist viewpoint of the world. Well, yeah. Um, they that, also hated minorities and like flooding their communities right. with drugs. So. Mm-hmm. Well, it depends. It depended yeah. on the minorities and how they felt about <laughs> communism That's too. That's true. They had very yeah. good connections mm-hmm. with the good well, Cubans. The other, the other thing to keep in mind with the CIA was that uh, one of one of JFK's big things and his, his brother as well was he was trying to dismantle the CIA. Like that oh, was yes. one of his Key, yeah. like, well, the CIA like, and the FBI well, because go- mm-hmm. government funding without sort of honesty, without yeah. like, yeah, without like very clear understanding of what they're actually doing with that money was also a big part of it. Which is like, why Ho- Hoover them. hated them. It's like, like when JFK was killed, he literally just called RFK and was like, uh, the president shot and hung up. <laughs> that was all he said to him. Yeah. Yeah, so I, I don't know where I was going with this. Um, I just I did want to just bring up a couple little things about the actual murder itself that are that's just kind of weird, um, and I will read from this. As Kennedy walked through the pantry area on his way to brief journalists, Sear Han appeared in front of him and opened fire. Experts said the fatal shot to Kennedy's head came from behind. Just a distance of one inch. Two other shots went into his back. The hotel assistant maitre d', Carl Uecker, who uh, wrestled with Sirhan, said, I told authorities that Sirhan never got close enough for a point-like shot. Never. And there's, I have a bunch of other sources that basically say he never got close enough to shoot somebody right behind the ear. Uh, he basically would have had to been had to have been hugging Robert in order to get a shot like that uh, and to get it as perfect as it did because it didn't go through his face. We have actual pictures of Robert Kennedy's face. And I would say I'm looking right at him and he looks conscious. That's the weird thing. Yeah. Well, it was probably yeah. a very small, well, I don't know. It was low caliber. Yeah, because you it want was low it. caliber, but still. If you it was, want low caliber, If it wasn't though. aimed in exactly the right way, it would have gone through his face. Yeah, he yes. wouldn't have a face. <laughs> well, well yes. the, the point of a it, low caliber bullet is to get it through the skull and then not enough energy to exit it so that it just shreds yeah. the brain inside. Yeah, it just it'll just around. bounce around inside the skull because it used all of its propulsive force going into the bone. It's actually more deadly to use a small caliber than a large caliber for those kind of shots. Right. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, so through and through where it provides and hitting uh, organs is kind of an ideal situation because nobody has yes. to take a bullet out. Yeah. Except when the greys use smart bullets made of titanium. <laughs> they use their moon laser. Any, anyway, my point is uh, Sirhan Sirhan did not uh, bend the bullet uh, after training with Angelina Jolie. Okay, so or... we have two <laughs> Kennedys who are both killed by fucking magical bullets is what you're telling right. me. Right. Yes, it's really it's some wow, weird, our, bizarre. Our, our, our government so. sucks at this. Well, mm-hmm. it's the, yeah. the JFK one can be explained in ways if you just add bullets that they just got rid of because well, they didn't want to admit it. So one of his secret security people definitely oh. shot him. Um, that's that's I mean, almost confirmed. They just oh JFK, yeah, that. 
Yeah, yeah. Like one like, of his yeah. agents, he had his gun in his hand, and he looks very, very like angered by something that happens. Um, and there's a sound that happens right as his hand sort of jiggles on his gun a little bit. Um, so the second bullet was most likely accidental friendly fire. Mm-hmm. Um, that sucks. But, well, that's because like yeah. if you look at all the casings yeah. they grabbed, they're obviously not the real casings. And they just did a lot of cleanup to be like, because they were so embarrassed. Right. Well, it's and it's the kind all... of thing you just don't want getting out. Um, yeah. Understandably. Yeah. Right. I, saw Joe, yeah. I, saw, I saw Joe Rogan bring that up. He's like, oh, a fucking perfectly shaped bullet. You pulled out of someone's skull. My ass you did. Mm-hmm. Well, that was the one when he had Mike I mean, Baker on the ex CIA guy. And he was like, yeah, that's the one that even on like. Uh... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um. um the great well, there was a. I wanted to find the photo real quick, but there was a, a photo of LBJ on. I can't remember. Is it Air if Force it was One the, taking a shit and talking to reporters? No, and not not pissing <laughs> on someone's back either, um, or talking about how he needed more space in the uh, crotch area for his pants. Um, <laughs> no, there's a there's a photo of him like shortly after the news had been delivered to all of them that the president had been shot or it was yeah. dead, I think, and. He's you like smiling. Guy, yeah, you see a guy behind him winking and smiling, like, yeah. which I, I, I need to find the photo. It's yeah. well, the the creepy part is that Jackie is also in that photo, and she is, well, she looks like the way you would expect her to. Look. Yeah, she's covered in his brains, yeah. isn't she? No, this yeah. is this is uh, this is someplace else. This is oh, okay. a black and okay. white photo. I'm not sure. I need to find where it's from before I say anything more. Well, there is a photo exactly, of him so. looking very cheeky, and she's in the frame, and it's very, yeah, he's, he's oh, not in was, the right. Yeah. Tone. It's while he was being sworn in as president. So, all right, oh. that was misinformation that I had about whatever because somebody was mm. trying to claim. Oh, well, wait, he was being sworn in on Air Force One. Yep, I yeah. forgot yeah. about like that. Like it happened immediately. Like well, that's, that's how saying, it has to. That's why. I'm, that's why I'm saying Jackie was still covered in his blood. I'm pretty sure. Anyway. Mm. Well, here I found. I the think. Photo. She, I think she. Ha- I think I registered saying she had it in her hair. Ew. Ooh, yeah. Well, you know, mm-hmm. brain and blood is hard to get out of hair, so. Right. I would know I was a marine. No, you're yeah. anyway, in, I, I you're a frog this, man. I think this polka dot woman, she might have been the person who did the other shots. But the question then becomes, there were witnesses in the hallway who never saw her there. Um who never saw those other shots to the back of his head or so and so on and so forth. So I guess the question is like, where did those shots come from? If he never got that close, uh, and it, how did those people not see either the polka dot woman or the other man who's never really heard from again, uh, after, uh, Miss uh, Serrano's Ghost. testimony. Ghost did it. Ghost did it. Uh, Eric, that's a fucking very telling photo. Mm hmm. Yeah. yeah, it could be just like a weird shot too. Like the guy's like, it could be about to sneeze or something. What if he just doesn't have a, a right eye? That's a possibility. Yeah. <laughs> could be. He was could putting be. his eye patch on. Um, yeah, that could be. Yeah, I, I have theories. I think it might have been. I mean, I think the most obvious one is that all of those people were just in shock and they just don't remember her being there. Um, it's also one of those but, things of like memory and those events is weird. Yeah. So like, when did mm-hmm. they interview them, and did they hear about this first? And then like, if you, like, mm-hmm. it's hard to remember a real event after a certain amount of time. Eyewitness testimony yeah. isn't like it's the worst. Probable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. I'm also, a, if a, if a, if one person who didn't see her is the first person to put their story out. And everybody else hears that. And this is a time where police techniques weren't really the best. Sometimes police would give away the goat by, like, telling witnesses what other witnesses had said on accident. Um, so it would end up contaminating the rest of the witnesses. And this happened frequently. I would not li- I would like to think that L.A. cops wouldn't do something like that. But, you know, L.A. cops, they've never messed up anything. Nope. No, that's that's not a thing. Um, so yeah, no. you never you never know. Um, they killed they killed Tupac. 
Uh, <laughs> anyway. It could just be that maybe Sirhan was closer, but again, it was a cop on the scene who said that they never got close enough for him to shoot him in the ear. Um, now, the super kooky, crazy theory could be that this woman with the polka dot dress is a, an alien or a shapeshifter. Or a time traveler. Uh, <laughs> who can blend into... <laughs> Why not <laughs> all three? <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, Eric. What if what if she is an aquatic werewolf and a shapeshifter? <laughs> We made sure the aquatic mother of had, God had the glands <laughs> cut out that would allow them to transform back into a human. It was just science. Get with it. You've My been new to- show is coming to the WWE Network. Because um, Vince would pay for that kind of thing again. Anyway, uh, you want to uh, pivot over to lose? Okay. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, sure. Uh, uh, last, do we have any like questions about this story? I guess. Like, no, I just learned I, a bunch of shit about. I learned a bunch of shit about this assassination. Yeah, no it's before. it's one of those things where like no one talks about RFK assassination. Really. Nobody. Yeah, he's kind of, he's overshadowed. He kind of got I don't even think it's that. I kind of feel like it's just for people who are into conspiracy theories, even people who only know a little bit about them. Like, it's just something that we're all like. Oh, well, yeah, that was obviously the government was involved in these things. Yeah. Well, it's also like it was – I believe it's in between. It's like uh, Luke, Martin Luther King was after him, right? I think. He was at before because he talks at, about it in the speech. Oh, okay. At this, point, at this point in the timeline, like if someone came out and just declassified like every shred of evidence regarding like those assassinations mm-hmm. and like even if no one did any fucking jail time – and someone just came out and said why they did it. Like, one, I don't think anyone's alive at this point to try. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Two, I think most people are less concerned with, like, justice. They want to know what the fuck the purpose was. So, right. honestly, I think if someone just came out and said, yeah, this is what happened and this is why we did it, I think most people would go, like, oh, thank you for closing the fucking book. I, honestly, yeah. I think the answer would be money. Mm. That's really yeah hard. no and that's the pro- that's and that's the other part of it. it's like you want the answer to this but then at the end of the day it's probably something so mundane and something petty or stupid or non consequential or like blatantly just like yeah inhuman like especially regarding like uh, Martin Luther King's assassination like what if someone came out and said like yeah written right here when the president don't like black people mm-hmm. yeah. 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 I think it was to maintain the status quo. I think that that's the yes. that's the overriding answer. Well, that works out so well for them. Change yeah. bad, girl. Because because the sixties at that time it was it was it was scary if you it was were a, an old oh, it was there was a powder keg too. Yeah, yeah, we you were. Thought we the were on entire the world was going to destroy itself. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, there was a real fear that like the country was turning communist and that it was gonna. Huh. Yeah, and then there would oh. be a real culture war. Um, oh no, that has never yeah. happened before. Yeah. Right? Yeah. No. So that sounds anyway, really right. familiar. Um, but instead of government officials shooting, uh, getting shot by weird figures, we're just shooting each other. Yeah. Also, we're hanging pedophiles, which I'm kind of about. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> uh, yeah. No, he committed suicide. Yeah. Right. <laughs> My ass. Uh-huh. Hold on, real quick. Have you guys seen pictures of that guy's cellmate? He did it. <laughs> it. He's a he's a jacked up former police officer who's done jail for like the drug traffic. Oh yeah. Wait, he was why a would bad guy. <laughs> why would they have him in a cell with some? Okay, and, because uh, our criminal <laughs> justice system is fucked, Eric. Like, it's fucked. Like I, he was. I mean, they were putting him away for something obviously that wasn't a white collar crime, but. Even with with the knowledge of what he did, with the money he had, they pro- I'm surprised they didn't put him in his own. So I don't. Okay. Anyways. Okay. Anyway, I just okay. Yeah. I just want to I want to tie this up just real quick. Uh, so I guess my my question just really to the audience, but I guess to you guys also is, I'm not sure that the woman in the polka dot dress is actually a person. That's something that I'm not really convinced of. She might have been. Sort of a an illusion created by his mind, created by his MK Ultra programming. Are you telling me she was a tulpa? Well, did he <laughs> did he bring or her? It, or did, if we go with the super realistic option, which is she was a CIA agent. She might have just been an actress 
or really like know necessarily what she did he did he bring like her there. up before or did they bring her up to him he brought her up to them he brought up the woman in the polka so dress when they he, asked him what his reasoning was i would say the uh, most realistic answer is he's crazy and he made that up and then they told a bunch of witnesses did you see a lady in a polka dot dress and they're like Yes. I think, I, yeah, maybe. I, I, my thing with the MK Ultra is, I think MK Ultra definitely plays a part. Yeah. MK Ultra is a oh, real program. I guess, I guess we know it happened. Yes. Um, it's it's not like a, it's not really conspiracy. No, so we, tried well, it, 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 we tried a bunch of kooky ass shit. Yeah, it's conspiracy, but it's not theory. Yeah, right. It's because yeah. like we found we found the files, like. The CIA in the seventies, they had to say like, "Yeah, we, there is an MK Ultra, but like, it didn't really go anywhere, and we didn't really yeah. do anything with it, and what it wasn't happened? like a massive operation." And then you get. And then in the nineties, they found files which suggested that not only was it a massive operation, it was a gigantic operation that expanded yes. into Canada. Oh, and you mean was, like the Unabomber was the part basis, of it? Yeah, and it was mm-hmm. the basis for the modern psychiatric industry just about everybody at the beginning of modern psychiatric care they were involved to some degree so yeah yeah Yeah, mk ultra was definitely real and there were definitely people who were taught to assassinate people or to do things against their will it's, um, it's connected to yeah. acid because acid was originally created as, or LSD was originally created as something yeah. to be used by by shrinks and psychiatrists and psychologists as a way to help open up their patients' minds. And the government got a hold of it and realized, wait, this is an easy way to mind control people if we use it the right way and put in the right chemicals. Yeah. So yeah, we, we can go down a completely different road with all of this too. But yeah, no, MK Ultra was. A, a lot of it was about uh, yeah. LSD, very powerful LSD. I think, yeah, MK Ultra can definitely be an episode all its own. Like Courtney Love was on LSD as a child, uh, mm-hmm. and she ended what the up in, fuck? she ended up in England, and she was the very, very, very young girlfriend of guys in the music scene there who ended up breaking up their bands and fighting with each other before moving to Seattle or not Seattle, L.A., and then eventually marrying Kurt Cobain, who ended yep. up dead years later. I wonder if any of this is connected to her being on LSD as, as a child. Um, Courtney Love was a MK Ultra assassin. I, I mean, don't, I don't believe it. Me. <laughs> I, you okay. know, there's no proof that she wasn't. So. I mean, exactly. yeah. Yeah, sure. I think we got a lose thing now. Um, so <laughs> it was Courtney Love an MK Ultra assassin? I mean, sure. <laughs> I think she was. <laughs> Can't convince me otherwise. Um, so my thing is kind of we somehow tangentially connect, like touched on it a bit, but I am always super interested in. Well, it's like two subjects, but I'm going to concentrate on one, which is like genetic memory. Also, you guys have been talking about Assassin's Creed a ton, so it's not not that it's that. Is someone scratching a dog? I am scratching my foot. Uh, <laughs> scratching a dog? I don't know, I just heard like a scratching motion. Um, So like, I don't know, to me, I am terrible at science, but like the idea that like, um, certain, not just like, but like memories, like kind of, uh, like we were talking about with like kids being afraid of those scary faces kind of like, is yeah. this like dormant thing in our heads. And it's like proven that it is, um, you can actually teach, um, I think it's like, uh, they used worms and it's actually what, um, Alan Moore based his Swamp Thing run on is like the experiments they were doing on worms to prove that they could pass down genetic memory from one to another. Mm-hmm. Yes, um, and it is just like the craziest thing ever. And they say that it's basically part of like evolution, and it's one of the reasons we are such a dominant species is because we're better at yeah. it. Because like, like it's, yeah. yeah, it's the reason that we're scared of spiders in the womb before mm-hmm. we've ever seen a spider. Yes, but it's um, it's also I mean, how we built. Before we've ever seen a spider, yeah. I hope there's not but, spider. Uh, 
in there. Yeah, but like it's also how we build like build on technology and stuff like that because yeah. when you're a little like think about how like kids are so easily adaptable to technology now compared to people who are older and like is it because they're getting it younger or is it because it's kind of built off of them? and it pulls from the other thing I always love which is the collective unconscious which I, I think mean, the two I'll, kind of connect I'll go one step further um, if we gave kids from the 50s modern Lego sets and toys of that of that kind um, and like those toys you can buy for kids where they get to build real motors that actually like work if mm-hmm. you give them like batteries and stuff um if you give those to kids at that time most of them wouldn't be able to do it most of them wouldn't be able to use it except for some very very smart kids toys uh, at least in that arena have gotten far more sophisticated and i can't help but think that part of it is built up genetic memory from kids who um had engineers as parents or you know that sort of but I I honestly have a question pertaining to this and uh, actually our like our pop culture bubble. But like, I don't know. What was your first fucking memory of Batman? Do you have one? Um, Right. Or does it feel like you came out of the womb knowing who the fuck he was? Well, that goes into the whole like. Like when I think of it, I like I try to think back of like Batman and Spider Man. Those are two where like. I don't know if I learned about them or if I just knew what they were. If I yeah, could. I couldn't tell you. It depends. Like, how many of us here are the firstborn kid or only child? Because I'm, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm the second. Yeah, I'm the second. Uh, yeah, so... I have, I have too many siblings. Yeah, so, <laughs> like, it's hard to say because it could have been with your siblings already. Like, could have yeah. had something. So that's, like... But to kind of go on, it's more like... Like, at least when I think of it, it's like, it's like those building blocks of like, oh, we go from this one piece of tech to like another, like kids don't know how to, like how quickly, like when you learned how to drive, like how quick did it take to really get behind a wheel and figure that out? Like, oh, wow, a, yeah. like yeah. A, a, you can probably figure it out in like an hour or you two hours. You can figure out the basics of driving, the absolute basic fundamentals in the parking lot with no peril in like an hour. Yeah. yeah. But like. And what two generations before you, maybe three, like that's impossible. Yeah. Well, driving was also harder, but yeah, I think that it's still, applies. Yeah. I think it was, yeah. But in the same way, I think other things get lost, like riding a horse. Like, how many of us could actually just jump yeah. on a horse and do it now? Because I could, I can mm-hmm. do it. I can do it. Like, I've ridden a horse. Yeah. To my dad, who grew up with horses, I'll or like, you- or, or creating, creating primitive weaponry. Mm hmm. Mm-hmm. I'll give you one that's <clears> – <throat> excuse me. I'll give you one that's very simple and all of you will be familiar with it but will be terrified to learn that nobody knows how to do it anymore or at least learns it anymore is writing in cursive. Yes. Yep. Yeah, because yep. no, it's unnecessary. Yep. Yeah. yeah. And it's it's horrific to me to like be able to see that happening. Like mm-hmm. that was something that – they forced feel like every yeah everybody knew how to do up to a certain generation. You know what? Here's the, here's the funny thing. I I was fucking terrible at it. I, and then as I, soon as I found like oh it's not being used anymore, great. I'm yeah. so glad that uh, years of being forced to learn it proved useful. I, I'm real good at <laughs> bullshitting cursive. <laughs> yeah, real see, I, I still sign my name in cursive anytime. And yeah, that's the only thing they teach kids now is how to sign their okay, name. Okay, I, like I sign my name in quote unquote cursive. Yeah, um, cursive. it's just it's, it's a big C and then some letters that resemble some O's and N's and an R, and like it's, they're all just kind of strung together. See, I don't know. After after I first read about like how nobody's using it anymore, like I went through and wrote out the alphabet in cursive just to make sure I still remembered how. Nope, like, can't fucking do it. Oh man. Yeah. Well, that's yeah. exactly. Here's what happens. It. Here's what happens. I'll get to G and go fuck this stupid alphabet. I'm done. Well, <laughs> G's a fucking dumb letter. Um, <laughs> uh, do you're saying that to somebody who has to put that into their the name. First weird ones. <laughs> that, uh, that's in my signature. That that's the one where it's. That's the one where it's like you start like it's make double a loops point here, and then you yeah. go down, and then you go up, and then you do a tiny curve here, and yeah. you come over, and you do a big curve here, and then you do a small curve here, and then a point again. Yeah, so that's what yeah. my my last Why? name. My last name is a G. <laughs> my last name is just a cursive G, and then a bunch of scribbles underneath, like inside of it. <laughs> 
Um, but yeah, like, I don't know. It's just like the idea. I think those two ideas of like genetic memory and collective unconscious connect to each other so well. Yeah. And yeah, I think it even connects to like animals and stuff. Like, again, to like our like dogs, like mm-hmm. how we behave with each other. Right. Yeah, I think dogs are a great example. Like, there's a reason that dogs still have, like, these aspects to them that are very wolf-like. Um, but they still know certain dog things, like, not out of the box, but basically from the very beginning. They understand that barking will get our attention. They understand to come to us when we're sad or when well, we're happy. I think they say like play with us. D- dog. Let me like having like because now I spend time with like all kinds of. Dogs yeah, I'm like talking all fucking on day. The, I'm just week. talking on the computer and, with like, my friends. Anybody out yeah. there and like someone who actually worked at my animal hospital like a year ago had the audacity to say that animals don't have emotions. Oh um, God. Why do they work at an animal they, hospital? They who cares? The exact words were, who cares? Dogs don't have feelings. Um, I'm like, Wait, think fucking... No, yeah. you don't. Um, yeah, you know, you... Yeah. Why are they right. working in the veterinary field? Because of right. paycheck. Um, she so, was going to go... Yeah. She was going to work in human medicine. And imagine how fucking dreadful she'd be at that. Um, she might actually be better. <laughs> who cares? People don't have feelings. Um, if she did like, a job underneath the Denver you're, airport. You're just like a dog. Um... But um no they're, they're let me tell you something and even cats like right um today we had a cat who came in who um who was diabetic and we were doing a glucose curve in her which is basically we just over one or two hour interims we take a blood sample and we see what their their glucose level is um, oh, I thought that's when you threw a boomerang made of sugar at her <laughs> <laughs> boy <laughs> here it comes um. <laughs> well, and we just we kind of see how the how the glucose and the insulin, you know, how the whole the whole system's kind of dealing with it. We see if it goes up, we can see if it goes down. We try to manage it. Um, this cat wouldn't fucking eat, and uh, it, it wouldn't touch anything. We gave it all kinds of foods, not doing anything. And and at some point, I kind of noticed that he's she's not sitting like a cat who you recognize when a cat's uncomfortable. Mm-hmm. Like they're not sitting on their paws. They're pe- they kind of got all four paws and like one like kind of Spider Man y pose. Um, the tail's whipping back and forth. At some point, I just walked up and started petting this cat, and she ate right away. Hmm. She just wanted wow. attention. She wanted attention. That's all this cat wanted. Wow. And she was showing us by constantly looking fucking stressed out. What a fucking deep. <laughs> <laughs> hey. I know. And I started petting her. I was like, you spoiled bitch. You, should, you uh, could have gotten her a pink tutu and gotten her some uh, <laughs> Neapolitan ice cream. Um, oh, but, no. like, but, yeah, like, like dogs, like, uh, submissive behavior is fascinating to me. Because dog will walk up to you, uh, you know, panting, tongue rolling out, ears down, tail wagging, walk up and go, oh, oh, oh look, you're friendly. <laughs> On their back. Yeah, okay. well, I think they've All said, right. like, pu- <laughs> like pu- the actual idea of puppy dog eyes is an evolutionary trait that dogs have yeah. Yeah. created. Yeah. Well, yeah. All, all animals, they've developed to look more like babies because they know that we'll fall for it and adopt them and bring them in. Yeah, but then it's like cats and dogs do it. Like, non-mammals don't do it. And, like, it's only you'll higher see, in it. You'll never see a bear do puppy dog. Yeah, but yeah. I, I, think a bear could, I think a bear could... Oh, okay. A because mouse couldn't. I think. Like, there's a reason we think a lot of baby animals look cute. Um, so yeah, mm. because they're um, easy to crush. But no, wait, like dog. dog <laughs> wow, Jeez. that um, reminds me of my times in oh Korea. No, I was trying to. Cover. I was trying to like, do a uh, callback to our. Of an M16 <laughs> works as well as a ball feed hammer when it comes to interest. It's stars. like he keeps finding new windows I haven't locked yet. Poke his head in the fucking yeah. house. I was just trying to do a callback to pro- uh, the Project Paperclip. <laughs> um. <laughs> No, I would just say dogs. Dogs have very, very effectively learned how to. I wouldn't say manipulate us, but like well, we, they understand how we evolved together. Like, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and so they understand how they need to get what, what they need from us. Yeah, and like, and which I still think is fascinating because like they're just like, yeah, just give me food. That's it. And yeah. like when you're sad, well, I'll come up and fucking pl- you know. Well, think about uh, all the things that we're using dogs for now. Like you can have a dog that can smell when your blood sugar is low or high. You mm-hmm. can have a dog who drives a moped. Okay. <laughs> you can have a dog. 
sniffing out stomach cancer. Yeah, there's a dog yeah. that can tell you that you're going to have a seizure soon. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you can have a set of three Connie Corsos that can oh take out God. a new Jersey. I used I used to have a Connie Corso when I was a child. <laughs> Um, and if you want to learn about how humans and dogs evolve together, you can watch the Sony movie Alpha that came out last year. Okay. A pack of 32 English Mastiffs took God down damn it, our Jesse. one. Get out of here for five minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Just like you hear him, his voice getting caught quieter as like two men drag him down the hallway. You can take me anywhere. You'll never be able to stop what happened if I broke talking about any I'm the body. You can't do this to me. <laughs> Hurt the body and the mind will transfer itself to the collective unconscious. Um, but you said like spiders, but like, yeah, we're all kind of like, there's lots of like weird primal shit that we're all kind of deeply afraid of that. Like, it's just a name. We may not. Yeah, yeah well, exactly. S- spiders specifically. It's, it's because of them not resembling anything else really. Yeah. On the planet, that's the whole idea of arachnophobia. That's mm-hmm. crabs, spiders, and that's really about it. Those are the two main things that look like that. There's yeah. not really much else on planet Earth also, that looks like that. It's well, also like the crawling on your arms and they're poisonous kind of thing. So that's mm-hmm. why, like, if you feel something yeah, tingle on your arm, you flail your arm around. Well, like, that's just that's just because of like skin and like yes, yeah, but that's in, and like mm. yeah. You don't want to feel like you're being invaded by something. Mm-hmm. I think spiders, they also move in a way that is not like anything else, really. Like, all insects yeah. kind of move at a speed that you would expect yeah. something that small to move. Relative yeah. to their- spiders are always deceptive. Well, they're yeah. also purely yeah. predatory as well. Mm-hmm. A lot of other and insects are not. They're, they're, but they don't look defensive. They look like they're trying to be very aggressive. Yes. Um Often, even though they're often very much just trying to get away. Yeah, and they're um, extremely important to like the ecosystem. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but spiders is one of many things that we've sort of developed to sort of as like these weird fears. You know, there's mm-hmm. a. Am I the only one who, when I see not ropes, but just like anything long and cylindrical in the wild, I automatically assume it might be a snake. Once I get it close, they do like a cat with a cucumber. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> that's a great example. Thank that's you for a, thank you for effectively first. putting a fucking lid on that stupid ass uh, meme for. Because like I was I was screaming that into the void of people. I'm like, they think it's a fucking animal or something. If yeah, I stuck a, a giant weird green thing behind you, you'd freak out too. Yeah. Well, right. even beyond that, though, you're also with that whole cat and cucumber phenomenon. They're also introducing this foreign object to them in a place that's considered safe. Yes, to them. yes. Uh, it, that's the they, biggest insult. Yeah, the cat is lowering all of its defenses because it's like, oh, food from the human. I don't need to worry about anything. And then the the douchebag human sticks a fucking alien object behind it and goes like, <laughs> um. Yeah, it's just it's it, it's it's mostly exploiting a cat's you know sudden vulnerability than anything else. So I I love the headlines. Cats are afraid of cucumbers. I'm like, yeah. no, cats are afraid of weird shit you put behind them. Yeah. Like, it's their it's their natural instinct. Yeah, yeah. If you put a fucking werewolf mask behind a cat, a cat's gonna freak out. Well, hear no, about werewolf. God, yeah. getting the gun. Um, <laughs> Um, one of my favorite videos ever is that dude in a werewolf mask and his cat's going, no, 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 Oh, no, it's not even a werewolf mask. He's wearing a cat mask. He's wearing a cat mask. Yeah, yeah, and the cat is going full fucking alien cat. Like, it's on its back legs with his front paws in the air. No, no, no. Oh, and to tie into something we were talking about earlier, um, Arlen, the whole mention of cylindrical objects seen in the wild, um, (laughs) that would actually tie back into the Catholic Church, that there's a whole bunch of little kids that are scared when they see... You need to rein it in tonight, all right? (laughs) (laughs) I'm on a roll, brother. Did this turn from an after dark into a very after dark? I'm angry that that was so good. Oh, God. Um, (laughs) You son of a bitch. Uh... Um, I would say, like, uh, even, like, uh, the feet, like, certain supernatural and paranormal things, we kind of have, like, it's... Yeah. I guess, like, the worry is built into us as kids, but, like, I, I can't I can't come up with a singular experience that would say why I'm afraid of the idea of ghosts. 
Well, it's well, you're I, afraid of the idea of death. Yeah, yeah. yeah you're and afraid the of death. That's, yeah. I think that's what ghosts represent most often. Huh. But like the the changeling and equivalents to the changeling in other cultures, because yeah. a lot of different cultures have their own version. The black eyed kids that Hunter brought brought up. They're sort of changeling esque. Um, that's the fear that you're bringing home a child who's not a child. Yeah. So the fear that you're bringing home some something that is going to be predatory towards you. That's yeah. not really like an ancient fear. That's a kind of a new Primal. thing. Well, there's, there's some of that this. idea that you're bringing that the thing that you're raising could kill you someday. Well, uh, that is kind of older, but the complexities that we've given it um, that there's the well, there's a description. That it's sort of hiding from you. Is that it? it wants to kill you. Because that, that, it's, it's just a, it's a lot like vampires, yeah. though. Like if you think about it, it's very similar. Yeah. Well, yeah. that's that's also connected to an extent to postpartum depression, mm-hmm. which I I think part of that is is the lizard brain inside women after they've had a child, like realizing wait this is the parasite that was living off of me for so long and now it's out in the open and that's why it's i mean in my mind at least i don't know if there's any actual studies behind this but it's why. probably that and like whether or not they think that they can yeah like have the yeah. actual like resources mm-hmm. it's like that you know why do some animals eat their young like mammals yeah well that's yeah it, because well a lot like i read about uh where was that Germany that there was a uh, lion that gave birth to two cubs and she ate them. It happens a lot. And like it's, all, it's, almost it's, all rodents do it. Yeah, but I mean this is this was kind of rare because it was lions, but I mean it's they're also saying like it's it was in captivity and it's a stressful situation mm-hmm. and because the mother ate the children there's no way to know if there might have been something wrong with the cubs either, then mm-hmm. that might be why. Because if the if the maternal instinct doesn't kick in, like those things go from being sweet baby lions to a nice yeah. little snack that mom can eat and in two bites. Most of them, if the kid if the 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 kids die, then they will still eat them. Like if even if they are not the ones that killed them, because that happens. Like like male bears hunt cubs, and then yep. if they kill a cub and they don't get to finish it, the mom will finish it because it's yep. yeah yeah it's fuel. Yeah. Protein. yeah. Yep. So they can, <laughs> Look who just so left this here. <laughs> they can go to sleep for like eighteen fears, hours. So, uh, to, to really connect it to the sort of theme, a lot of fears are based in instincts that we've built up for yeah. years. That that's one of yeah, my main. Uh, and a lot theory. of those fears that are passed down turn into these stories of black-eyed children, ghosts, vampires. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I know you, yep. you you mentioned um, in this like what like group hysteria, group uh, group hallucination, shared delusions, stuff like that. Yeah. Um, I mean that kind of goes back to the fucking show we all love because um, they made a big ex- uh, uh, example out of that last season. And I guess um, one of the um, I actually looked up there was a uh, there was a story about um, a high school I think it was. Where people were like, we smell gas. Oh, yes, I remember this story. School, evacuate yeah. the school. Uh, people are showing symptoms. Uh, evacuate the school, do testing. There's no gas. They checked uh, it for I like mean, several days, and people were showing yeah. symptoms of uh, carbon monoxide poisoning, I think. Yeah. Um, they go back. It's a repeat of the exact same event. We smell gas. They're symptomatic of gas poisoning. We check, no gas. Huh. And it's just these, these people all somehow collectively came up with this idea that they were being poisoned. Well, it's this, it's the idea of an idea going viral. Yeah. yeah. Like the idea itself is like the sickness, right. which that show does perfectly to illustrate in that one episode. Yeah. And I, you, you mentioned vampires and werewolves and like that, like for some reason, like um, a lot of people kept insinuating that meant like, People who were doing heinous acts of violence were 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 shapeshifters, were animals, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. because they were behaving in a way that's not that's, you know, you not like, human. That's we're not civilized. Well, I, like, I think they say that the werewolf mythology comes from schizophrenia, yeah. is what they think. It comes from a couple different. Yeah, things. but it's like that change, that like behavioral change, that snap. Yeah, and the the vampire thing comes from uh, what is it? Not typhoid. Um, 
consumption was another name for it. God damn it. Yeah. And also, uh, um, yeah. Tuberculosis. That's it. Tuberculosis. Burying, yeah, and, yeah. And, and and burying people who weren't dead. Yes. Yep. Uh, which yeah. is a common practice. Well, even okay. even beyond that, though, so. when people are dead, how their hair and nails seem like they continue to grow, and I mean they yeah. do yeah. to an extent. No, it's but the yeah. skin retracts. Yeah, that's it, what happens. But that was that was also one of the things. Like, mm-hmm. was that if they would dig up a body and find that, it'd be like, oh my gosh, it's vampire. We must burn this body, and that yeah. So it was it was just poor medical practices led to a lot of that, but it, mm-hmm. it created a myth that entered the collective unconscious or and like lives on to this day for forever. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. now that they could now, <laughs> you can't even which is weird because like there are people out there who like like I saw a werewolf. No, you fucking didn't. Like, <laughs> well, yeah. so here's the thing: werewolves are also, and this is this can be a whole episode. It, there's a lot about this, but werewolves are very much connected to vampires and just the entire idea of shape-shifting in general. Mm-hmm. They've sort of become their own thing as time has gone on. But early werewolf myths are about, you know, vampires who die, but they don't fully die, and then they come back as wolves um, who feed on the blood of people who recently died. Um, And that comes from this thing that would happen where people would get into uh, large-scale battles um, and there would be heaps of bodies and dogs would come around and feed on uh, dogs and wolves and or coyotes and there's also like grave like grave robbing was a huge thing as well well i've i've also heard uh that it's a it's a ancient jewish uh, tradition um and it was a uh, it was a bar mitzvah i think that i'm a werewolf bar mitzvah Spooky, oh. scary I wasn't sure what you were doing I was that really one. wondering. Was, I wasn't sure if this was a bit or not. Or... Yeah, it was so, like, like so intentionally underwhelming. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> Damn you. Boys becoming men. Uh, okay. Um, yeah, but yeah, this stuff goes back, you know. Gorgons, uh, which Connor, Co- Connor got to watch Woo! stuff very recently. Gorgons also draw their inspiration from the same places as vampires um, because people would they would think that people weren't actually dead and they would go back and they would find their faces sagging in but Mm -hmm. their skin still not supple but like looking as if but flushed as if they had just recently ingested blood or just life in general Um, well like a lot of that stuff is um, what do you call it? Like sirens are people going through what is it? Um, like mad, like ocean madness. I can't remember what. There's like a term when you have like that isolation. Scurvy? I think it's scurvy oh. and like the isolation. I, I think it's also people who uh, want to fuck manatees, but that's just yes. yes. Uh, that, uh, I've written. I can't remember. Yeah. How I open the door. <laughs> when I was in Rome last year, and they were like, they have all the maps. Like, there's like sea monsters. It's like, yeah, basically all that is where, if you look like on a map now, that's where there's like always gigantic storms because of currents. Yeah, and also then, dragons. Mm-hmm. Like, <laughs> yeah. Well, like, well, that's. You know, I mean, like dragons are a weird thing that like every culture. Who were separated by thousands of miles, um, and like several other countries, all have their own concept of dragons. Well, this yes. Was, all right, this was something that, mind you, I was pretty young, and I might be misremembering it. So, please keep that in mind. But when I was in Boy Scouts, I remember I was out camping, um, and the one guy who was like an assistant scoutmaster, he was <laughs> he was a. Uh, he was going to school for folklore and mythology and whatnot. Okay. And we were, okay. we were talking about all this. And what did you guys think this was a bit? This wasn't a bit. <laughs> yeah, um, you, you, you've set up no trust this whole episode. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, we were talking and, you know, it's, I'm obsessed with that stuff about that age. And he brought up the fact that I think it was in Celtic that the word for bear and the word for dragon are very similar in the way they were written with the oh. at the time, which I, that would make sense, but it's also a horrifying idea to think of a bear that could be so big. But there were. Would, at right. some point. Yeah, there were, but I, it's, it just, 
I, I, the whole idea of bear and dragon getting interposed well, is actually a really interesting idea to me. Yeah, well, you have that, and then you have, like, imagine people, like, seeing a mummified crocodile, like, mm-hmm. or a Komodo dragon. Or even, yeah, even dinosaur bones. Yes. Uh, I yeah. mean, imagine a world where Gustav, uh, who we've talked about before, uh, imagine a world where he's just, like, average. Where he's just like you know middle of the road in terms of crocodiles, yeah. like, and the big boys are like twice his size and they're everywhere, and it's mm-hmm. the year ten thousand or and even earlier in Africa where everybody started. All of us, we all we were all there at one point genetically. Right. Um, so yeah, like if you. you the only place you can wash your clothes is in the Nile River, and a fucking dragon comes out of the water and fucking pulls your well, brother in. And well, think he's think about like a most like believe that most humanity comes from Africa, like that Fertile Crescent area in Mesopotamia, mm-hmm. which is non day Iraq. What if it's again going back to that genetic memory of like the cats, and, like the dragons, and our genetic memory of crocodiles? Mm-hmm. Yeah. 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 Now how dragons got wings that that's one Well it depends on yeah, the my, my, certain my cultures the have wings and bears some is like how do you go from I I saw what should be like the biggest fucking dog I've ever laid eyes on, um uh to it had wings, scales, and breathed fire. But I mean, you know how that's the thing. That's that's something that's common with almost all dragons, with the exception of the I believe it's the Chinese have like they, a ton of different types of dragons. Yes, each the, of them. The Chinese and the Japanese, they don't necessarily, they usually don't have wings. Mm-hmm. And but they, they still well, fly. And when they do, when they do, they're very small. Yes. Yeah. The difference yeah. between them, I can't remember. It's like one has two toes, one has four, something like that. Well, the, that and the the. Uh, well, no, because I'm trying to remember the Chinese dragons that you see in like the uh, in the street fairs and whatnot. Well, like those look more. Well, like those dogs, are dog ones. Yeah. Well, yeah, a yeah. traditional Chinese dragon is the dragon from Dragon Ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but I just it, I it's still something that has spread. So it's, I don't. I, that's where I yeah. get confused with the whole like Celtic bear dragon thing. But I could also understand it because of I just saw this giant thing. I don't know what it is, and here well, it sounds. And right. they say like if you only, and it goes back to the whole memory thing, and we were talking about like if you only see a glimpse of something, your brain fills in. The rest. Yeah, yeah. On the, I mean, on the Asian dragon thing, they also they do have crocodiles there or crocodilians. Like yeah, and com- like Komodo dragons, and they have other large monitor lizards. In the yeah, they have, a lot, they have a lot of large amphibians also. And I, I remember reading something or seeing some documentary where they said that we don't know how large amphibians have gotten. Like, we don't have a. Yeah. The records on them is Actually, not as if you, as what we have reptiles. Well, and I would imagine an island nation and a nation that made most of its living off of the ocean being right next to it probably saw some really weird things coming out of the ocean before we poisoned it all. So I mean, we've only seen that one weird species of shark that's really long and looks oh, a lot. Oh, shit, yeah. The it, goblin it, shark? It, yeah, swam was, right, uh, it swam right up to a dock. Yeah, I think oh. it might be the Shark. Yeah, and well, the, it was just there, and nobody had. Well, think about like, it was think about the idea of the kraken, and we know that it's real, like and it's yep. still alive in the oceans. Yes. It's there. Yeah. Oh, no, 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 it's not a goblin shark. The goblin shark is that fucking hideous thing. The goofy thing. Face and, yeah, the, yeah. No, that. It, it looks like a dragon. It's a. It, it, if you looked at it, you're like, oh wow, that's a dragon. The frilled shark. Um, oh, okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I have yeah, and they're those. not supposed to exist. They're not. Yeah. Well, there's a bunch like, of stuff. Remember, uh, is it the sturgeon that they thought was extinct? And then, like, no, coelacanth. It's, it's the coelacanth. Coelacanth, yes. Yeah. Oh, um, it looks yeah, like a like, giant like, eel. Like, so fucking long without ever seeing one. Then, like, they, now they're, like, like everywhere yeah, in this part like, of yeah, Africa. Yeah, caught one one day. <laughs> yeah, now they're just, like, everywhere. They, like, survived. They, like, turned it around. Yeah. 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 This thing is um, yeah, creepy yeah, as hell. Yeah, it was a frilled shark, and I guess like they're not supposed to exist. At least this high, this, they're yeah, like a deep high. sea, because it's yeah. not really a. Sh- it looks like an eel. 
Um, it's like there's a also a. Um, have you seen that video of? Um, it's also in Japan, I believe. Um, it's it's like a it's a huge fucking squid or an octopus that uh, that swam right up to a dock again and just hung out there for a bit. It yeah. might have been a squid because that's what I was referencing. Is like the giant squid exist and for like I can't remember the first thing they ever found was a tentacle in like the forties. And then I think well, like a what, like a couple, are, a couple are, of years ago they got video. There, there are colossal squid. I think it's colossal yeah, squid. They actually got video yeah, of. They're, bigger. they're even bigger. And yeah, they're the yeah, ones that like, like fight sperm whales. Yeah, yeah, yeah. and that we yeah, know they yeah. do. Like, it's not. It's at this point we're like we, we're not like they don't exist. We're like, oh no, they exist. We just haven't fucking seen. No, them I yet. think they got video of it within the last several years. <laughs> they do. They just they haven't gotten like. Good video. Remarkable video. Yeah. yeah. Like they – anytime they have like a probe going deep, deep down that yeah. they're looking for these things, like they'll have tentacles. But it's hard to get a scale idea when they're when they're like, yeah, no, the size of that tentacle means it's a giant squid or whatever. Mm-hmm. And it's like, well, I can't tell that based on just that little bit you're showing me. Yeah. But yeah. it's also it's also men and women of science, so I trust them. Right. It's, it's that's wrong with anybody trying to go that deep. Like a lot of there's a lot of theories that there might be great whites that are 30, 40 feet long. Well, yeah. well we know that there were there were gigantic but, sharks like megalodons existed. Yeah, but they're just so deep underwater uh, that they don't need to come up. Uh, and we know that great whites go deep. They go very deep, especially when they're mating. Um but the running theory is that if they are that big, that they just wait for other things to come down to them and then yeah. they eat them. Well, the thing is, so. once you go down so far, like you, the things get used to the pressure. So yeah. they actually cannot come up. There's actually a great, I think it's an Instagram account of like this Russian fishing boat in like the Arctic. Mm-hmm. Um, there's like shit that they pulled up like in their, their nets. And it's just like the most fucked up looking fish and animals. Because they like if you, when they come up, uh, they come up fast, and they like kind of explode-ish. Yeah, oh. yeah, it makes sense. If you look up the Greenland shark, which is about the same size as a great white, um, you can't find them unless you're underneath hundreds of feet of ice, um, and they just exist underwater. And they're what very. The, I've never seen very one shy before. Boys. Yeah, and they're very docile. They don't. They are. Attack. They yeah. are funny looking, my God. <laughs> yeah. It looks like it's and going. They got a weird looking face, man. They got a. Oh, is it yeah. the one that's in that one movie? Um, no, that's the Goblin Shark. That's this the Goblin looks Shark. Like it's going, this one looks like it's going, hello. <laughs> yeah, they got like weird facial dis- disformingness. Yeah, and like their their skin looks like uh, it's like they're all they're pigmented and. Um, uh, yeah, they're wow, they're bizarre. Oh, wow, this is okay. So I was like doing, which I love going into Wikipedia. They hole. they look like fucking torpedoes with faces. So, mm-hmm. Arlen, to go with what you're talking about, there is a term in zoology called deep sea gigantism, also known as abysmal gigantism. That makes sense. Basically, that like an, that is an awesome term. Yes. yes, and basically, the farther you go down, the larger the animals get. Yeah, that makes sense. Of like, and it's because like the temperatures, it has something to do with like the temperatures and stuff, which is also like there's, I can't remember what it's called, but um, there is the same kind of term for like islands where Mm -hmm. like certain like mammals, especially, will get gigantic. And there's, I can't remember what it is, some part of Africa where like basically water systems changed and there's just this island and all that's on it are lions and water buffalo. And so the lions are are ginormous because the only thing that they could hunt is water buffalo. Yeah. Well, that that also ties in with, uh, I mean, partially with insects. Like, they were so large because of the temperature being so warm during the uh, Ice Age. But also... also, Oh, go ahead. uh, Oxygen concentration. That has a lot. That's, Mm -hmm. yeah. But the other thing was... um, like I know with spiders in particular, like Pennsylvania is lousy with wolf spiders. And I know mm-hmm. from experience that they will grow as large as the as their edible population around yes. them is. That is what that's and, the same thing with fish if you have a fish tank as well. Yeah. They're horrific 
that that is the way they work. So realistically, some of the stories that have popped up here and there about gigantic spiders in the Amazon, mind you, there's no pictures, but people yeah. who from like the 1800s and like early 1900s who were going to the Amazon um, talking about like natives telling them, oh, yeah, no, don't go to that area. We lost somebody to a giant spider <laughs> or a giant insect, essentially. Oh, yeah. 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 Completely it's believable, kind of I think. Right. Well, and like all of Skull Island, like everything on there yeah. is based on that idea, right? It's just a bunch of like I, it's a like it's a weird island that humanity's barely touched with. with well, you know. yeah, that's yeah. also island gigantism. That's yes, part of that's it. what I was talking about yeah. with the lions, and that's why like uh, Kodiak Island, in Alaska, has the largest grizzlies. Like they're not a separate mm-hmm. species. This is like the bears that live there are gigantic because of. Um, I did well, find where I think is that picture of the fucking the colossal squid someone yes. got in that video where you can see its fucking eye. Mm-hmm. Um, it's pants grabbingly terrifying. Like yeah. <laughs> yeah, it yeah, looks like one biggest, of my. It looks like one of my fucking eyeballs. Like it's huge. As big as a dinner plate. Yeah. Yeah, because yeah, be they found one yeah. swam up to a ship and like they couldn't get it in, but like yeah. Jesus. Um, I mean, since we're on this, uh, everybody look up the Humboldt squid, since I assume we all have computers. Yes. Because the Humboldt squid is, they're not they are not super big, but they're fucking little monsters. And there are some theories that they might even be as big uh, as the giant squid in some places. And um, one of the craziest parts about this is, like, these are some of the smartest animals that exist. Yep. Like, yeah. was it like they were called like cephalopods? I think is there. Yes. yes. Cephalopods, yeah. Yep. Uh, and if anybody's wondering why I'm asking, look these up. Look up their look up their tentacles because their tentacles are fucked up. Yeah, they uh, have razor sharp teeth in them. I'm also yeah, seeing a picture the... of like someone holding like its beak, and it looks like a raptor claw. If yeah. I, if I'm remembering this, um, there was a video someone shot of like pulling up some sort of some sort of probe that was underwater near an area that had a lot of Humboldt squid and they were actively attacking the rope and the probe that they were trying to pick up because oh, they had a video on this because off. they're very aggressive Oh yeah, very they aggressive they 100% like hunt and stalk humans yeah. the Humboldt squid uh, like there was a dude who fell off his boat at night and he almost died because of the Humboldt squid attacking him and trying to fucking pull him down. And yeah, what okay, I love is all, if one of these tentacles wraps around your arm, you're losing a good chunk of flesh. Like, oh yeah, dude, they're the size of people. They're this like also they're like they're suckers are not suckers. They're little mouths. Yeah, they're like little. Yeah, they're like they're weaponized suckers. Yeah, oh, like, God, Mother Nature is fucking terrible. Well, that's what they. I, yeah, like they yeah, f- they have found fossilized right. proof of like giant squids. Like that's the whole kraken thing, of like tentacle yeah. cups on other th- like they can't they can't be fossilized, but like scars on other things in the shape mm-hmm. of a yeah. cup. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, it's and that was part of the reason why they knew that giant squid existed was just from ships coming back with like oversized like. Is pucker marks on the rubber parts of their hulls, like mm-hmm. ships that were like you know further out in the ocean and had were large, so they had a much deeper presence in the ocean around them. But yeah, I can remember yeah. being a kid and seeing things on that and just being like, "All right, that that's horrific." Yeah, but they're um, but they're delicious though. Yes, they are. <laughs> Calamari is wonderful. Oh, yeah, I it is. Um, I think we can wrap up though. I think um, so. Yeah, I'm also starting to get a little a little sleepy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I was starting to start like, droop lower and lower as the show was going on. Um, yeah. oh, there it is. Very much went off the rails, but hey. Hey, it's fine. You know, it still stayed kind of on topic. Yeah, I don't it's know. fine. Also, Hunter clearly fell asleep. Um, <laughs> no, he lost his internet. It died. Yeah, he lost- oh, okay. It was um, a black-eyed child. He came. He unplugged yeah. his router. <laughs> and it, it made his internet sick. Yeah. They, they disabled his Comcast connection or whatever their version of that is. Well, that, that, that's the problem. They actually work for Comcast. Let <laughs> me in. No, I'm disabling your internet. 
Comcast has the worst reviews of any company. I wonder why. We can give you stars for free. <laughs> or we'll never leave you alone. <laughs> oh, oh my god. Okay. Oh, just a matter of a minute, Connor. You can do it. Okay. Um, I've been Connor McGraw. Um, so Movie Dumpster's summer blockbuster bombs is almost over. Uh, we got two movies left. We just recorded Pluto Nash last night, and um, may God have mercy on your soul. Fuck me, that is one of the worst movies I've ever seen, and it wasn't even that fun to review. And a lot of times, we kind of just do what we do on Phantom Zone, which is go off in small tangents because that movie is the worst kind of bad. Where it's just, it, it's it is nothing. It is boring. Um, nothing fucking happens, and I kept making jokes. That it felt like a dumb Total Recall, and then it was a dumb Total Recall, <laughs> complete with complete with doppelganger twist. Um, uh, it's really fucking bad, and I thought it was gonna be like a like I thought it was gonna be a, like a a weird kind of stupid '50s space opera kind of thing. It's not. It's mobsters on the moon, which should be fascinating. It's not. It's terrible. Yeah, that um, should be good. There's yeah. No- should be great. Um, but uh, we have uh, 13th Warrior and Green Lantern left, and Arlen's going to be on the Green Lantern episode, which is really, it's honestly like between those two movies, it's pretty like a Sophie's Choice. So uh, it really is. 13th Warrior is so good. I might bust through one of your doors and be like, I'm on this episode. <laughs> uh, in, your fucking, in your fucking Saxon helmet from Red Dead yeah. Redemption. <laughs> <laughs> Or the 13th warrior has been made yet. <laughs> I just I just love that Antonio Banderas plays an Arab. It's so good. Um, oh, Hollywood. Oh boy. Oh, 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 hey, boy. it's better than a white dude, arguably. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. It's, it's safe brown. Is, um, is the most uh, offensive thing ever like oh what is it? Short circuit? Oh god. With Fisher what's his, Stevens. Yeah, doing Fisher Stevens Stevens. doing brown face. Yeah. yeah. Um, but uh, we just banged out Deep Rising as well, and we fucking loved that movie, um, which is something I had never seen its entirety in one full sitting. I'm so glad I did because I had a blast the whole time. Um, and that movie holds up tremendously. Um, and then I found out before we started uh, – well, I found out after we, I watched it before we started reviewed that Harrison Ford was supposed to be in that movie and not Treat Williams. And I was like, wow, that's that wow. Was, that wow. Was a totally different movie. Um, and it sat on the shelf for two years uh, or wow. something like that for a long time. They just didn't know what the fuck to do with it. Um, and then dropped it after Titanic came out, and people were like, boats? I, I don't need to see two movies about boats in one year, and just didn't go. Mm. Yeah, so it has a very sad uh, life and uh, and a subsequent theatrical death. Um, and I guess its ending was uh, supposed to lead to a sequel that just never fucking happened. Uh, and I'm bummed, because I would have loved to see Treat Williams, Famke and Jansen, and that guy from The Mummy uh, uh, wrestle some dinosaurs on some island. Yes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, it's great, and uh, Green Lantern should be fun because I've said it before, and I'll say it again. It's it's gonna be, it's uh, Joe Lascola is gonna have to sit there while three DC fans tell him why it's bad to be a DC fan. <laughs> oh god! <laughs> and you're gonna have to keep bringing up like this was supposed to be the start of the DCEU. This was their Iron Man. <laughs> I've already brought yeah. that up, and me and Sean are already geeking out about it, and like how there's like I guess. The director wanted Bradley Cooper, and he didn't get Bradley Cooper, so he was just super shitty at Ryan Reynolds the whole time. Uh, uh, you yeah, know what's funny? How sense. if you're Bradley Cooper, you're better off being a, a, a CGI raccoon in your comic yeah, book you're, movie. You're doing better voicing a fucking <laughs> sentient rodent. Yes. <laughs> um, but that's it. That's all my plugs. Um, I guess this is kind of how uh, Shadow Zone is gonna uh, exist until I really truly deeply figure out what the fuck to do with it but uh this is fine i like this this is cool um i just wish i wasn't quite as deadly tired as i was uh because i probably would have had a little more energy than i did but um we're gonna start doing some new stuff with after dark soon um we're kind of gonna expand the horizons for a little bit because uh 
uh, reviews have left us uh, dried up husks of men, and <laughs> even and that's the thing. Even when it's stuff we enjoy a lot, we're just we, we, do we have life get in the way sometimes? Mm-hmm. Yes, and mm-hmm. people can't finish the episodes. So yeah, yeah. Um, that's all my plugs and stuff, so I'll just pass it on to everybody else while I just slowly fall asleep over here. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, speaking of life getting in the way, uh, me and Eric Sayor are still doing LHP. It's bi-weekly. Uh, we recently recorded a fall, summer, or fall preview for movies that are coming out for the rest of the year. So uh, listen to that when it comes out. It's two and a half hours, which is only 30 minutes longer than this episode. So See, I'm, I'm so tired. I just heard you say fall movies, and I was like, what are you talking about? It's the fucking end of summer. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And that's uh, it, uh, Arlen? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, MASH is... It's going to happen again someday. We will write again. Um, and uh, listen to the entire Los Haro podcast network. <laughs> 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 Sorry. <laughs> Bill Wilkins. Um, yeah. Lou, you can go yeah. ahead because you have more plugs. Than uh, yeah, if you're listening to this, listen to Smallville, listen to Comic Show. For Smallville, we just wrapped up season four, and as a special, we watched the pilot for Krypton, which is... <laughs> it's, Krypton. it's... I can't ever not call it that when I'm referencing... By, by the way, Man of Stew got a big laugh. <laughs> uh, it is it is actually pretty good, and I think I will watch that show at some point. Man of, Man of Stew. Oh, Krypton? Yeah, Kryp- Krypton, I, I've actually come around. It's like... It, it's gorge- It's actually it, strangely it, gorgeous. It's kind of like, yeah, yeah it's no big surprise why Sci-Fi fucking canceled it. Um, yeah, except for one... What? Sci-Fi canceled a good show? There's I'm two so <laughs> There's two things in the pilot that, are, that don't look good, and that is, I can't remember... The character's name, um, but what's his name? It's one of the guys from Game of Thrones, and he looks so old, and his costume does him nothing. It just looks like he has a giant gut in his like blue onesie with a giant red cape. <laughs> <laughs> and then like they use like a Superman cape later on, and it's like it looks yeah, like they I'm, I'm Superman. It looks like they picked it up at a um, like a dollar store. Uh, Oh, yeah, Anything but, else that you want to plug out of the million no, shows that you're on? That's it. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm Eric Fedorchek. You can find me at Instagram. Uh, uh, at Eric underscore Fedor. God, I almost forgot what my Instagram was. Um, oh, very tired. Pictures you. of dogs and cats and comics and food and whatever the hell else I feel like posting. Uh, I'm also floating around the Phantom Zone. And we can... We can talk about how uh, the Sony is uh, uh, was, uh, the best company on earth, and we all have very <laughs> short memories about how they ruined Spider-Man Three and drove a director away before, and then also ruined the series another time with another two movies. Um, and we can also talk about how I finally accepted it. David was like X I was just truth. tapping my watch, like just waiting for it to, to turn over. David is truth about me. If I come through this gate the right now, what will happen? The reptilians and their luscious cloaca. Oh, one more thing. Okay. <laughs> Don't forget to follow me at young underscore kami. <laughs> yes. Ooh, this episode yes. might not come out for months but thank you yes. <laughs> he's not here he fell asleep with his internet they took a nap so no but you understand that that, <laughs> that will be a very old callback if this episode ends up in a fucking <laughs> that's perfect man storage <laughs> Okay. Okay. Or not. Also, considering how often he changes his Instagram handle, this could be irrelevant by tomorrow. That's true. Right. There's probably something about Moon Knight at this point. No, I just looked it up. That's what it does right now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> okay, I think we're done. Yeah. Bye. Bye, everybody. I'd like to apologize for the things I'd I like said. to shoot Jesse Ventura in the fucking nose. I have a tumor the size of five.